this time I'd like to call the commission meeting for April 3rd into order. City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Present. Commissioner Burbank. Commissioner Colwell? Here. Commissioner Jody Lee? Here. Commissioner McCool? Here. Vice Mayor Bradford? Here. And Mayor Vila? Here. This time I'd like to turn the meeting over to Commissioner McCool for the invocation and the pledge. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, and welcome this evening. Uh, we will do things in this order. We will have the invocation, and we will then have the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the National Anthem. The National Anthem this evening will be sung by the University High School Titan Chorus, and after they are finished, we're going to have just a moment with Jonathan Anderson. Um, so if you will, uh, if we could all stand, uh, Reverend Palmer, if you would come up. The invocation will be given by Reverend Michael. Mike Palmer of Universal Life Church this evening. Please remove your lids. Dear God, we ask for your presence and guidance as we come together today for this Deltona City Council meeting. We are grateful for the opportunity to serve our community and we pray for wisdom, discernment, and humility as they make decisions that affect the lives of our fellow citizens. We pray for the safety and well-being of all who call Deltona their home, especially those who are vulnerable, struggling, or in need. May we work together to create a community that is just, compassionate, and supportive of all its members. We ask for your blessings upon the proceedings of this meeting that they may engage in productive and respectful dialogue and that their decisions may be made with the greater good in mind. We give thanks for the gift of democracy and for the opportunity to work together for the common good. We pray for the courage to always act with integrity and for the strength to lead with compassion and kindness. We ask all these things in your holy name, amen. Amen. Now if we could, I'd ask Commissioner Jody Lee, a retired military, to lead us in the pledge. pledge And if the chorus will now come up, please. Traveling with me across the pond to eat scones and like what? 
sausage? I don't know, whatever else they serve is there. And uh, the, the good news is uh, we were invited uh, by a company that does uh, choral festivals overseas. We'll be singing two concerts completely by ourselves in some of the most beautiful uh, sanctuaries you've ever seen that I know I've ever seen. And then we will finish with a mass concert of about 300 chorus kids from around the world at Westminster. Um, and we will get to sing under the direction of the current director at Westminster, who will be coming here to work with us around August, September. So that's why um, I, the reason I'm talking to you guys today is because we need support. We need community help. Uh, we have a golf tournament that we are signing the papers on. We'll be having at the DeBerry Golf and Country Club in June. So we need supporters. We need people to play golf. We need people to give us money. Um, and because these poor kids, it's about 3,500 total cost for each kid to go. And the goal is to lower that to about uh, 2,500 or less if we can get it. So our fundraising goal is 60,000 as of right now, um, but we'll take what we can get. So if you have organizations with your uh, your company banquets or breakfast or something that you want a little performance at, my kids, especially my show choir kids, these kids can sing pop music, they do acapella stuff, they do anything. So uh, just give me a call. Jonathan Anderson at University High School. I'm the course director. We'd love to come out and support you. If you can support us, that would be great. Thank you so much for your time. This time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to approve a uh, Approval of minutes of the regular commission meeting of March 20th, 2023, so as moved. presented. So moved. moved by Commissioner McCool. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Bradford. Can we please vote? Thank you. Commissioner Burbank. Motion passes seven to zero, thank you. At this time, I'm gonna ask the commission to please uh, come with me to the floor. We're gonna do the Superstar Student of the Month certificates for March 2023. Okay, so the first recipient is from Deltona Lakes Elementary, Rosalie Barado Gonzalez in fifth grade. If the principal is here, they are more than welcome to come pick up this certificate for the student. Okay, so the next recipient is Discovery Elementary, Liam Alexander, fifth grade. Next is Enterprise Elementary, 
Cheverica Plaza Robles from fourth grade. Okay, next is Forest Lake Elementary, London Ramos, second grade. The next recipient is from Friendship Elementary, Devana Gilbert, Kindergarten. And the next, the next recipient is from Pride Elementary, Chloe Wilson, fifth grade. The next recipient is from Spirit Elementary, Kai Foster, second grade. The next recipient is from Sunrise Elementary, Riley Hammond, fourth grade. The next recipient is from Timbercrest Elementary, Amar E. Hens, third grade.
Amari. Thank you. <laughs>
This time I'd like to call Dana McCool so we can start with our proclamation on Child Abuse Prevention Month. them have a moment. Thank you to all of our superstars. asking them to come up before. Yeah. As the people are exiting. get started um, I'd like to ask um, for everyone to be seated Joe if you could come on Joe Hearn if you could come up please yes Posse can always ride. First of all, on behalf of the city of uh, Deltona, its children, its parents, and its stewards, thank you for everything that you guys do for this community. I see you out every day. You're tireless. You are pointed. You have a clear mission. And if people have not been introduced to your team, they should be because what you do is amazing for this town. So thank you on behalf of all of us for that. We appreciate that. This proclamation is whereas Florida's future depends on nurturing the healthy development of our children and whereas the abuse and neglect of children can cause severe costly and lifelong problems and whereas every child has a right to a safe healthy and happy childhood where they are educationally and developmentally on track and whereas research shows that parents and caregivers who have support systems and know how to seek help in times of trouble are more resilient and are better able to provide safe environments and nurturing experience for their children and whereas individuals individuals, businesses, schools, faith-based and community organizations must make children a top priority and take action to support the physical, social, emotional, and educational development and competency of all children. And whereas blue and silver pinwheels now stand as a symbol of health and happiness all children deserve. And whereas during the month of April, Prevent Child Abuse Month Florida, in collaboration with the Governor's Office of Adoption and Child Protection, the Florida Department of Children and Families and the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida implement Pinwheels for Prevention, a statewide campaign promoting awareness of healthy child development 
positive parenting practices, and the types of concrete support families need within their communities. Now, therefore, we, the Mayor and Commission of the City of Deltona, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and urge all Floridians to engage in activities whose purpose is to strengthen families and communities to provide the optimal environment for healthy child development. Executed this third day of April 2023. Thank you very much for all that you guys do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I introduce the camera? Yeah, absolutely. Please okay. do. So in all our clubs at the Boys and Girls Club, this month we do have Pinwheel Gardens to represent Child Abuse Awareness Month, We're working with one of our corporate supporters. I just want to take a minute and introduce this fine team who looks out for our youth in the community all the time. They're the ones who deserve all the credit. They're the ones on the front lines making sure our youth have a safe place and that they are taken care of. And if there is an issue, that it is brought to the right authorities' attention. Um, first, we have Barbara Santiago. She is the director of our Harris Saxon Club and her short time with Harris Saxon at the Boys and Girls Club. She is so invested in this community. She has really just taken on the children as her own children. And um, she's ready to open a couple more. She says, we have too many children in Deltona. We need at least two more clubs. So we're working with our Volusia County Schools and throwing it out there and putting it up in the air um, to hopefully we can get a couple more clubs working with some partnerships in this community. Because with so many residents, we, we do need that. And to my left over here is the amazing Joe Sullivan. He has been with the Boys and Girls Club mission for 42 years. His, uh, his first club for the Volusia Flagler Boys and Girls Club started right here in the city of Deltona. Um, it's where it all originated. We are now up to 10 clubs or 11? Nine. Not enough. We're only at nine clubs. We were supposed to be at 11 last year. But needless to say, um, we are working on opening some other clubs um, where the need is happening. We are opening a teen center, um, and we're looking to open more teen centers because we do feel like that's an area in our communities that does need additional support so the teens have a place to go, especially here in Deltona. So thank you so much for this. Um, Joe has been compassionate about this, uh, I think, 42 years total and 32 years with uh, Volusia Flagler Boys and Girls. 31. 31 years. Years. And I'm um, just committed to the mission. And what's really what blesses us in this community is, you know, the people underneath him, 25 years, 23 years. So to stay in this industry where your youth services, where you're taking care of sometimes the ones who need it the most, to have employees that have worked for you 25, 23 years, and so on, that's an, a testament to, to a job well done. So I thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you to the city commission and the community. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big thank you to the Boys and Girls Club. This time I'd like to call Commissioner Caldwell to the front and Mr. Glenn uh, Wickham, please. Thank you. This proclamation, that whereas the water is the basic and essential, where the water is the basic and essential need of every living creature, and whereas the state of Florida Water Management District and the city of Deltona are working together to increase awareness about the importance of, of water conservation, and whereas the city of Deltona and the state of Florida has designated April typically a dry month when water demands are most acute, 
Florida's Water Conversa Conversation Month to educate citizens about how they can help save Florida's precious water resources and whereas the city of Deltona has always encouraged and supported water conservation through various education programs and special events and whereas every business, industry, school and citizen can make a difference when it comes to conserving water and whereas every business, industry, school and citizen can help by saving water and thus promote the healthy economic, economy and community and now therefore we the mayor and the city commission of deltona do hereby recognize the month of april 23rd or 2023 as water conservation month and call upon each resident visitor and business to help protect our precious resources by practicing water saving measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water executed this third day of april 2023 This time we're gonna do the presentation quarterly, report, quarterly reports of city advisory boards, committees. They're all written reports. Nothing to you Okay. So we move on. This time we're gonna enter into public forum. Okay, Mayor, there are seven public comments. The first two are online. The first person is Beata K. Stice Palaz. Okay, I don't believe that she's present or he. The next one came online, Alan Baldwin. Not present. Okay, Carol. Sorry about that. Please come to the podium, sir. Mayor. Evening, evening to everyone that's in their respective places. I am Alan Baldwin uh, from Tri-City Bulls. I am football director. I uh, have with me uh, Derek Baker, who's president of Tri-City Bulls. Uh, we actually came out to actually speak on behalf of Tri-City Bulls. Thank you all for recognizing even two of our players that plays for Tri-City Bulls, which was Kai that came up, and of course the other one couldn't come which was uh, Mr. Lewis. So we just wanted to let you guys know that we're in the community to help the community, to also be about pride for the community, to actually uh, be a part of Deltona, not only for football, but also that we would help these kids to be better men, not only on the football field, but also in the classroom. So um, today we really just come to you all, let you all know uh, we're actually are here to just present ourselves, to let you all know that we are Tri-City Bulls. Uh, we actually been around two years now. This is our third year uh, having a program. We've actually been rent renting the facility over at Dwight Hawkins. We've also had a chance to meet with Miss uh, Dana McCool uh, over at the other field, uh, Manny Rodriguez. Uh, and so, uh, of course, uh, my face may be a familiar face to some of you all uh, because I actually also pastored in the area of Deltona. But we, we come, as I said again, a football program that we would like to continue to betterment our kids in the community uh, as well as uh, in the classroom. And so there's a couple things that we uh, have in place that we're trying to do in the community, and that is that we would also be able to tutor our kids that come out for football, as well as our Big Brother, Little Brother program, where we can begin to begin that as well. Um, so those are the things that we're looking forward to. Um, we would like to find out more information on what we need to do uh, to be put on uh, the, the uh, 
the, uh, the, uh, the, the registration list of promoting our football uh, organization as uh, far as uh, your emails, uh, also, also on the website, or anything that we can do uh, to be uh, acknowledged in the community. Uh, we've been around, we're gonna be around. Uh, and so we wanted to, to actually uh, do whatever we can do to, to as I said, better the, the players, uh, not just on the football field, but also in the classroom. Thank you. Carolyn Hickerson, Thank you. please. Thank you. Can we make an announcement? Because some new people don't know that when they come up and speak to us that we can't respond back to them. Yeah, I, they don't know that probably. Um, I wanted to come tonight um, because I saw some comment online and I felt compelled to come and pray for Dana tonight. And so I'm going to pray for you. Um, Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and Lord God, your word says that by your stripes we are healed, and that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Lord God, your word says that when we are weak, you are strong, and Father God, I pray that you would fill Dana with strength, and that you would heal her body, Father, head to toe, body, mind, soul, and spirit, Lord God. Father, I pray that you'll give the doctors wisdom in dealing with her condition. And Father God, I pray that when she is feeling weak and tired, Lord, that she will be able to rest in the arms of you, knowing that you have everything in control, Father. When the world seems out, so out of control and so difficult during these coming days, Lord God, that you will be her strength and her guiding light. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Michelle Brown, please. Hi, I was just having a random conversation and I was encouraged to come and speak to you tonight. Um, my name is Michelle Brown, I'm an assistant principal at Sunrise Elementary. I'm also, I live right down the road, I've been, um, a member of the community for a long time. I graduated Deltona High School when it was like brand new. There was no other high school here and we were like a two lane road over here. Um, I don't wanna give my age away or anything. But I just wanna say that I was very pleased with a lot of family events that we have. I feel like our community needs a lot of healing, especially after COVID. And um, our parents need healing. They need those places. The Deltona Community Center, it was a beautiful event that we had for Christmas time. And I, you know, I looked as a parent, so I have a seven-year-old and a 22-year-old. So I was looking as a parent through, you know, the eyes of my student, I mean, my own kid, but then my students or the community members that were there. And it was just a great event. I I know we have a lot of events that go on, but I think like trying to get more families together so we can heal um, and get them more involved so they're not transient or they're not looking to go to Orlando or you know other spend their money in other places, but really just be together. I know that was a free event for us, and I think if we can do more of those or low cost events. Um, I would like to also say the YMCA field, and I don't know if anybody here, you know, I don't know if what is in control of that or not. I know that's might be private, but that field back there is, is not great, and they're encouraging, you know, a lot of those kids to go to the land YMCA, and we're losing a lot of our family members there. So um, we haven't been able to utilize that field in two years for soccer, and um, I used to see a lot of my kids there playing, not just my kid, but I used to stay and watch a lot of my students play, and I've seen a lot of my students grow up. So if we could just take in consideration, I don't know who would reach out to those to the YMCA or if that's a separate entity, but I wanna thank you all for your time. I really appreciate you. Um, I didn't really like the call for shelter duty, but I did like serving the school right down the road from my home at Galaxy Middle. I got to be with a lot of members of our community, including the nurses, um, and they were really important to us. They ran that shelter and they did a great job. So I just wanna thank all of you for what you do and please take into consideration more family events that are low cost because a lot of our parents can't afford it. And I feel like that's always a good time to heal everyone together and bring everybody together. You guys have any questions for me? Because <laughs> I know we could talk to each other. No? Go ahead. No questions? 
No, I was just going to say we generally don't have dialogue back and forth. Oh, okay. Um, staff will take messages. You're allowed to email us, and then Perfect. we can, you know, if you want to stay till the end, we do at public comments respond to a lot of the inquiries. Okay, I'm just used to talking all the time because you know I fend all the parents. I know complaints. it's hard because we sit up here and we can't respond. But I, like I said, I thank you all. I just think of the the community. We need to heal. Um, there's a lot of parents that need that. A lot of families that lost family members during that time. So thank you all for listening, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Douglas McDonald, please. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Commissioners. Doug McDonald at 1494 Surrey Run Court here in Deltona. I have just four minutes to, to discuss two issues, so I'll be real quick. First issue is I want to commend this commission and the mayor in particular for the nice headlines he got in a beacon last week, in which he's uh, promulgated the desire to have three downtowns. Wow. Lord knows we need it. Thank God. I hope all of you use your best judgment and find a way to support that because we're desperate. We need it out here. So thank you very much for, for that effort. <clears throat> I've been here since 1992. You're the fourth mayor serving the previous three. I heard a lot about this. Nothing was ever done. Nothing. Although I heard a lot of talk about vision for the city. Well, now we have a vision. So God bless all of you. Okay, the next issue is something that is below the radar, uh, something I've not heard much about here. I want to introduce it to all of you. That's the idea of uh, requiring uh, candidates for the primaries and the elections to have party designations. I know this is a strange thing here, but I will tell you that recent headlines from South Florida, all the municipalities and counties down there have adopted this. And we now have Orange and Osceola counties looking at this issue. And I think it's something we desperately need. Believe me, I have done more campaigning and more work over the years than anybody else in this room. And I will tell you, all of you, that the ignorance of the voters out there is immense. An example, I would go out uh, knocking on doors, asking people to vote for so-and-so, whoever it would be. And the first issue I get from the people is, should, who should I vote for? Well, what kind of ignorance is that? They don't know who to vote for. And I'm sit sitting there telling them, but this is not right. We need to have more education by the voters who put you all in office. And one way to do that is assign a label to each, each person running. For example, who knows in the next few years how many parties we're going to have? besides the Republican and the, and the Democratic. So please give it some thought, and there's a lot of value to it, and I know there'll be some opposition to it, but I think it's still a good idea, and we need to look at it. And we don't, you need to run, your, run that by the city attorney, but I don't think you need an ordinance. I just think you need a regular vote uh, by the commission. Uh, by the way, uh, I will say this. I forgot what I was going to say. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Del Terrace, 007, please. Oh, that's tall. All right. I was unable to attend the last commission meeting held March 20th, likely by the grace of God and a little luck on y'all's part. However, I did go back and watch it, and I'd like to address District 2 Anita Bradford's comment that positive props are okay, negative props aren't. I almost want to repeat that again, and that everyone here will just know the difference and knows what it means. Unfortunately, she clearly has failed to read the Constitution that she took an oath to uphold. She surely doesn't understand how the law works, public office, or the responsibility of the constituents. I found it especially amusing considering it came from you, Little Miss Del Terrorist herself up there. I guess negative words are okay as long as you don't have a prop in your hand. It's okay to incite the circus, but you don't like it when the circus comes to town. You went on to mention how we've been through this before and we're not going to have all that again. Well, quit acting like the damn circus. Then it wouldn't be necessary. How that concept hasn't crossed anybody's mind so far is beyond me, because every new election, you don't see it in the beginning. And then somebody wants to try to cross those boundaries, 
and impede on people's rights, and then we're forced to show that you can't do it. It's not that we want to, it's incited. You create this. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean you can ban it, label it negative, and somehow against the rules or any other ridiculous things you're attempting to do. Perhaps you should go back and watch the meetings, figure out why you're voted the winner of some of these polls, and self-correct. I'd highly recommend it because I don't think many of you go back and listen to these meetings after they've occurred. Honestly, you would have taken CP for me, but I'm only one vote, so I didn't get that control. So the conclusion of the last two meetings, March 7th, as follows. The polls results are, for our true representative, although the residing holder was Mayor Vila, you came in close second. Commissioner Dana McCool was actually the winner of this honorable title. The residents who voted found that you during that meeting were acting as a true representative of the people. Our clown puppet for March 7th, our reigning title holder, District 1, Tom Burbank, held his spot again for the second meeting in a row. How embarrassing, but well-deserved. As for our last commission meeting, held March 20th, the results are as follows. Once again, congratulations, Commissioner Dana McCool. You were voted number one. Although what I found interesting was there was only votes for two. Two of you received votes. That's it. The rest of you, not once. Not one person. As for our clown puppet for that meeting, it was a close one for sure between District 1, Tom Burbank, District 2, Anita Bradford, and District 3, Maritza Vila Vasquez. But ultimately, District 3, Maritza Vila Vasquez took the lead and won this dishonorable title. Well deserved. If you're wondering why these votes went the way they did, I would say go back and watch the meetings. Listen to yourselves. Say, I wonder how constituents took these things that I said and did and then you'll understand the results of these polls. Perhaps what we need is to rid our government of the negative commissioners, and maybe the city will finally move forward. Thank you. Kathy Bryant, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, Kathy Deltona. Uh, first off, um, the last meeting we had, maybe the time before that, I sent everybody, or I requested at the podium if during commissioner comments you could explain to me your decision for hiring the attorney. I didn't hear anybody say so in, in comments, so I wrote an email to each and every one of you. I heard from three of you, two of whom didn't need to answer me because they didn't vote the way everybody else did. As a paying citizen, taxpayer, and considering that it's my money going towards this, I would like an answer, please. Yeah. Number two, um, I saw the classes about the Citizens Academy, and I was just talking to Mr. Santiago about it because uh, I wasn't, I, I thought it was the county, I realized it was actually the city, and it's something that I think would be interesting and cool to do, but it's Thursday for several weeks in a row from 9 to 11. And so many people work, so I'd be, and I, I realize there's a, um, you're between a rock and a hard place, whereas you need to have staff here and probably people working for it to be effective. But on the other hand, it'd be nice to be able to have like something late or even earlier or a different day of the week because it's, it's a few weeks. If it was one day, maybe. And it does look like it's gonna be recorded, so that's, that's good, I guess. Um, next is uh, the last commission meeting. Mr. Jody Lee said something about you know, we can always vote no when it comes to land code use when, and, and developments and stuff like that. Well, the, the fact of the matter is is that you, you can't always say no because you haven't upgraded your land use code. So until you do, until we do, 
you, you can't always say no as long as what they're asking is within those references. So I would really like some feedback on what is being done, um, where and when it's being done, what's happening with that, and I, I get no response on that either. And last but not least, I have to thank the beacon, rather the bacon, <laughs> for having a couple of us. Um, in the April Fool's edition of the bacon. But that being said, what's really, really sad is that there's been so many shenanigans with this commission, previous commission, so on and so forth, that it wasn't outside the realm of possibility of going, oh my God, are they, you, you've got to be kidding me. Thankfully they were, but the, sadly, nobody was surprised like, oh yeah, that's a joke. Everybody was kind of like, what? Good joke, but that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Bryan, please. Albert Bryan, I'll turn him. Hmm. I saw an award tonight. I was really stunned that y'all gave it out. An award for water conservation. I was really stunned that y'all gave it out. There's an estimation by a very good source that we're allowing anywhere between 300 and 800,000 gallons a day to seep out the artesian wells that, oh, that's right, Tetra Tech hit. And yet, as far as I've heard, I haven't heard anything being done to them. Matter of fact, I've heard just the opposite, that we're rewarding them by giving them more work. <sighs> but how can you accept an award for being conservative with water when you're leaking more water out than the law allows? Hmm, interesting. Now, that brings me to my next point. There was mention that Lakeshore is being cleaned up. I guess that depends on your definition of Lakeshore. Because what most citizens thought was being said was that the straw project that failed was being cleaned up. Well, no, that's not actually what was being said. What it was being said is the fact that we got parks and recs down at the community center actually cleaning up it. Hmm. That's interesting. Because last I heard about it, it needed to be demolished because there was so much mold in it that it would cause you asthma just from walking in the damn thing. So it makes you kind of wonder where we're actually going with all this. But, you know, I, I get it. I get it. You, the government only moves at a snail's pace and sometimes even slower than a snail. So you can't ask for very much because you're not going to get very much. It just never works out that way. And I know I'm being told that I'm just a complainer and that I, no matter what I see, no matter what I do, all I'm going to do is complain. But it's funny. I'm one of the few residents have actually come up here and commended staff on a good job or said that the city did a good job doing something. And yet I get the negativity because I speak out on so many different issues. Well, maybe that's because there are so many different issues within our city. We're a big city. And it's amazing to me that we still have, after six months, an artesian well that is leaking so bad that it's caused runoff in two different directions now. And yet, nobody's given any answers about that of what we're doing or what we're not doing. Even though I've stood here and two other people that I know have stood here at this podium and asked that we hear something about what's happening to the straw project. But, you know, I get it. We all closed the doors, shut all the windows, told everybody you can't speak to anybody. 
So there's nothing coming out of this building anymore at all. I get that. If that's the way y'all want it, we'll go out another route. Thank you, Adam Vasquez, please. Good evening. Uh, I was uh, going to come up here and talk about a couple of things tonight, one of which was actually covered in a recent news article I read. Um, I, I, I had a question on, you know, how much Deltona um, invests in the trail system that run, running through our city, not just the, the trail that the county owns at the south end. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you guys are aware, but close to Normandy, there's a school over there. It begins in District 3. We actually do actually have a bike path that runs along the side of Tivoli. It goes down April. It gets close to Monticello. It's close to uh, Lenonia Preserve. And there's another bike path. They're kind of ad hoc, but there's one on LCAM. So I was wondering if we can get, uh, for starters, like maybe some signage for the, for the cars and on the bike path that says, hey, caution, there's a trail crossing. Uh, one thing that's really dangerous for bikers, and, and there are several, you know, there's a lot in our community is, is the cars, right? Like cars, for some reason, you know, even with the signs, um, you know, cars versus pedestrians is a huge problem. Um, I, I do, I do want to see the city expand their trail system. I think that we should hook up with the the trail on the south end of the city that takes you, of course, either to Sanford, Seminole County, um, or out to Brevard County. Um, there, there are um, some areas where we can do that. There's the power line right of way that runs, that cuts right through the city, uh, that can support a trail. There's an area, uh, be, some of it would be an enterprise, so we would have to work with the county, but behind Cloverleaf, um, that brings you up Deltona Boulevard, there is, would be a gap between there and those power lines. You're almost through the city on a trail. I do think that the other side of the city somehow should be served. Um, I don't really bike over there, so. The, other, the only other request that I would like to see you guys address it during commission comments or commission special requests. Um, I, I don't really think that we repave our city streets all that often. Um, but Normandy between Saxon and Providence, I know there's been, I know, I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, it's been messed up for years. If we could just resurface it, I mean, I don't know what our budget is for that. I don't think we're really using it. So, um, you know, if we could, and it's really only one lane, but I would hope that you guys should resurface both sides. If we can get that fixed, that is a city street. It's a major through fare. Um, so I, I look forward to hearing what you all have to say about that. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, David Sosa, please. Hey, David Sosa. Um, I last watched last Monday's um, workshop on food trucks again. And Jody, I know this is personal with you, and I agree with you. It was a bad ordinance. Should have never been voted or approved on. Um, you know, I voted against it twice as a commissioner. So with that being said, Jody, what I'd like to see you do during your special request tonight is to make a motion to repeal that ordinance at the next city commission meeting, giving everybody fair and ample opportunity to show up and voice their opinions. Um, to, to give Marsha the okay to go ahead and tweak what you've already done is just insanity. She's already spent tens of thousands of dollars of public money, our tax money, on a food truck ordinance. Between legal fees, staff, and all the meetings, Jody, I, I'd like for you to maybe do a public records request on that and see how much money we've actually lost in this ordinance. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that bothered me in that meeting was when Marsha said there's a lot of redundant information in there, and she knew it. Why? Why do we pay her to put that type of information into an ordinance that doesn't need to be there? And then to have her tweak it to remove it, it's either incompetence or she's just billing the city and taking our taxpayer money. So, I mean, that's something that we really need to look at. Um, what we should be focusing on, though, instead of the food trucks in workshops, is the building moratorium. That's set to expire. I'm, I'm curious how much work was actually done on it. I would love to see the rough draft of the building moratorium. 
I don't know if any of you have seen it or even requested it, but that is definitely some, it, it doesn't have to be the final product, but what have they done with the building moratorium? Another big one, the pass-through ordinance. What has been done with the pass-through ordinance? We got all this development coming, and who's eating the legal fees? The, the taxpayer. Those who pay taxes are paying for this pass-through ordinance and legal fees for developers. So I, I think that's something we really need to focus on. Next would be the fire department accreditation which was in the process of being worked on, help improve our ISO, improve some of our ratings, and you know, with our insurance and so forth. Uh, the Parks and Rec accreditation, I mean, we had that one packet that came through, I don't know how long ago, we just passed another um, item for another 100,000 to do something with Parks and Recs, but we've never discussed what happened the first part of that. Um, also, the Lakeshore Drive disaster. I know Albert, I just got here, he was talking about that. I agree, that's a disaster. What is going on with that? I'm just curious how much money that project has cost the city already. And I wanna know if we're gonna be looking for legal action against the engineer on record. They, that was a total disaster based on the engineer that the city hired and they should be responsible for fixing that issue. And I would like to know what the cost associated that on a daily basis to maintain that disaster that the engineer created. Thank you. Thank you, Dave Munez, please. I'm Dave Munoz. I've lived here for five years. I'm on 597 Trade Winds. This is the fourth meeting I've been to and I originally came with my personal grievance, but when I showed up, it seems like there's a lot more issues going on that are more important. I guess all I really wanted to say was, I'm not impressed with anybody here. The first time I was impressed was at my last meeting was when Dave Sosa came up and he had a lot of good questions and nobody had answers. And I would stand behind that guy any day before I would stand behind any one of you. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. This ends public comment. This time we're gonna go to 7A, which is public hearing ordinance number 04-2023. Request to amend the Deltona Village business plan to unit development overall development plan, master development plan, increasing the number of multifamily unit allocation for the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units. Amendment to the development agreement approved by ordinance number 21-2009 and rezone an additional 26.57 acres of land to be included with Deltona Village. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Commission, members of the public. Joe Ruiz, Interim Planning and Serv uh, Development Services Director. Uh, today, as the Mayor read into the record, Ordinance Number 04-2023, uh, Deltona Village BPUD Major Amendment. Uh, before we uh, go ahead into the presentation, uh, uh, Mayor, I'm going to ask if you can poll the Commission for Ex Parte Communications, as this is quasi judicial. Absolutely. Ms. Marshall Siegel? Um, if you would, I will then, Joe, do you want me to swear in before the mayor polls? Um, sure, that's fine. Okay, yeah. all right. This is a, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. Anyone that is here that is vested? We can't hear you with the mask. Can't hear you. Well, I'm sorry. I need to wear the mask. Well, I can't hear you, so you don't have to get your mic. I do have a mic. There you go. go. No, we're here. That's great. Uh, anybody who has received any kind of notice with regards to this property, because they're in the vicinity of where the property is located, if you've received such a letter, or anybody else who would like to speak not in a vested position, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Okay. We don't have anybody to oh, you. Do you, do you swear that the information that you're going to present to the commission tonight is the truth and nothing but the truth to help you back? I do. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Reese, please continue with your presentation. Uh, um, yeah, we have to go to ex parte. Oh, that's right. Apologize. No problem. Commissioner Caldwell? Um, yes, I met with uh, Frank uh, the other day. Mr. Microphone on, I can hear you. Um, yes, I met with Frank the other day at the site and uh, did a drive through. Commissioner Jody Lee? Uh, I've had a tour of the property. I met with Mr. DeMarsh and I had a tour of the property. Been there twice. Commissioner McCool? Um, self guided uh, assessment of the property. Commissioner Burbank? None. Commissioner Avila Vasquez? Yes, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I met with Mr. Marsh, his lawyer, and I also took a side tour of the place. Vice Mayor Bradford? I have met with Mr. DeMarsh, I've met with his attorney, I have met with staff and the city manager as well regarding this project. And I have met with staff, I've driven by the, the property, that's about it. Thank you, City Commission. Uh, so this is application number RZ22-006. Um, as mentioned, um, ordinance number 04-2023 for Deltona Village BPUD major amendment. Uh, so just to go over the BPUD amendment application request. Uh, so there's uh, three requests essentially built into this ordinance. Uh, number one is to amend the Deltona Village BPUD overall development plan, master development plan, ODP, references the ODP and MDP, to increase the multifamily unit cap to 652 units from the originally approved 414 units. Um, the second uh, part of the request is to amend the written development agreement, uh, which was attached to the staff report and to you all, approved by ordinance number 21-2009, and also to include additional land totaling approximately 26.57 uh, acres into the Deltona Village BPUD. Uh, so, so just some background on this uh, project. Uh, the site generally is referred to or located at 939 Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, typically known as the Epic Theater. Uh, the size of the project is currently 140 acres uh, in size, uh, 10 of those acres being included and added into the BPUD within the Second Amendment. The current zoning uh, is the Deltona Village Business Plan Unit Development. This was approved via ordinance number 21-2009, and the ordinance was adopted on February 15th of 2010. Part of the original BPUD approval or the original BPUD approval um, essentially approved commercial retail service and light industrial uses amongst others. Uh, also uh, referenced within the list that is on sheet two of the master development plan, overall development plan. Uh, also included with this approval was 414 multifamily units uh, approved at that time as a conditional use. Uh, the TIA, um, just to kind of recap what was approved as far as traffic uh, back in 2010, allowed for 17,808 average daily trips, 1,141 p.m. peak hour trips, and this was all uh, per the 900,000 square foot of, of footage of retail allocated based on the previous development of regional impact, uh, which was known as the Southwest Activity Center, Development of Regional Impact, um, which at this time um, has, or it, at the time prior to the approval had been deemed um, defunct. Um, and so based on those vested rights were um, applied into this PUD. So just to kind of give you a, a brief um, picture of what's out there as far as the existing Deltona Village PUD. Um, so here we have um, the, the square per se of what exists today. Um, there are some pockets of agriculture um, that, uh, that are still exceptions to the BPUD. The applicant uh, and the landowner has gone over time acquiring properties. Um, in the previous BPUD amendment, they had incorporated several parcels as well, um, and today are asking to incorporate 26.57 acres. Um, unfortunately, this map is not fully updated. However, um, we do have recorded ordinances for that. So just to kind of give you an up-to-date um, view of the aerial Integra phase one, uh, our Integra apartments for the 301 units currently being built is in this location here. Um, here we have the Burger King, uh, the top right, we've got the racetrack, 
Um, down below, we've got uh, the movie theater with um, so the existing movie theater. Um, just to kind of give you a, a picture of what's coming um, to the west of Burger King, we've got the Starbucks um, that's going to be coming in. Um, that permit has been picked up, so just kind of giving an update to every, all the Starbucks lovers. And in this area here um, will be the Alpine project just south of the substation, uh, which is 52,800 square feet of light industry or manufacturing uh, for the Nutty Bavarian. So just to kind of give a recap on the BPUD amendments that have occurred, uh, the current one being the third, the first amendment um, application RZ18-003, was a request to modify the minimum lot standards within the BPUD and change the 414 multifamily use provision from conditional use to a permitted use. This was adopted on July 2nd of 2018 via ordinance number 10-2018. The second amendment that occurred was RZ21-0005. Uh, this was a request to rezone and add eight parcels, as mentioned, into the BPUD and vacation of certain right-of-ways. Adopted on December 13th, 2021, via ordinance number 06-2021. So just to give you a view of what is being requested to be included into this BPUD, and as you can see, the request is to increase the, um, the boundaries, essentially, of the BPUD, and thank you to our staff for going out there and posting the site, approximately 40 signs, uh, so I just wanted to give them a, a public shout out here. So part of the expansion parcels being requested is this yellow piece here by the movie theater, as well as on the northern side around the Mashmeyer concrete plant, um, which, is, uh, which makes up the rest of that 26.57 acres. Uh, just a clarification from the staff report, um, this parcel here, uh, you can't see it because it's overlaid in yellow, is actually industrial, uh, which has been updated and reflected in the ordinance. So that is accurate within the ordinance there. A little history on this, this uh, was approved back in 2004, that northern piece was uh, north of Graves was approved in 2004 as the Interchange Commercial Center. The development agreement was never recorded, um, never executed and recorded, therefore the entitlements for that site have, um, have been vo voided. And so uh, currently that is part of the request to add them into the BPUD to entitle them as, as per the Deltona Village BPUD. Sorry. So some matters of consideration when we're looking at these rezone requests. Uh, is it consistent with all adopted elements of the comprehensive plan? Uh, is the impact on the environment or natural resources, um, is, is it impacting them, is, is it good or bad? Is the impact upon the economy of any affected area? Uh, what, is the, uh, what does the code say as far as uh, concurrency items as, such as sewage, disposal, schools, potable water, drainage, fire protection, solid waste, and transportation systems? Uh, we look into any circumstances and changes of the conditions affecting the area, any mistakes in the original classification possibly of the maps, and its effect on the public health, safety, or welfare. In reviewing this project, uh, staff has provided a staff report for you all um, to look at. Um, as far as the highlights of what staff was able to find and staff was able to support, um, we found that the request to increase the multifamily unit cap is consistent with the comprehensive plan as well as current market demands on the local economy. The, there's a policy built into the activity center that allows for a maximum of 15% of the activity center to be allocated to multifamily uses. Uh, therefore, that is what we reviewed it. Um, two, the staff also recommends that the DA amendment is consistent uh, or that um, believes the DA amendment is consistent with the request and meets the intent of the original BPD approval regarding uses, square footage, and trip caps. The rezone and addition of the approximate 26.57 acres is consistent with the comprehensive plan and does not provide additional trips from the vested uh, entitlements. Just to make a note, back when the Deltona Village BPUD was approved, there is a um, an exhibit to that original approval that showed the 900,000 square foot cap in total included this area to the north there um, as part of that those traffic counts. 
Um, at this time, uh, staff recommends the city commission approve ordinance number 04-2023 uh, for the amendment to the Daltona Village BPUD uh, with these three requests. Um, just as a note, you all received an email from the, the applicant's attorney, Kim Booker, with some typos and uh, corrections to the DA. I did not provide an updated copy to you all, not to confuse you all, uh, but at second hearing, if that's the case, then you all will get a copy of that. I just wanted you to see what the minor changes that staff deemed were. At this time, if you have any questions. Um, also, I um, just wanted to mention, I did I have gotten a few questions from some of the commissioners regarding whether we have a master um, concept plan or architectural elevations. Um, other than what has been approved, um, we do not have any uh, renderings or, or of, of future projects and things like that other than what you all see within the master development plan. Any questions at this time? Thank you. At this time, I'm going to take a point of privilege before I call on the other commissioners, just because I, I feel very passionate about this, and I don't, I don't accustom myself to doing this. But um, I, I have some questions that I like to ask you, Joe, uh, because I don't want it to kind of leave my mind. You said that this project specifically does not have a master plan. Other, other than what you have seen attached, um, there is no, other than, other than the plat that shows some of the roadways that the applicant has planned, um, there is not a master plan that designates this area is gonna be the second phase of apartments or this area is gonna be uh, for this or this retail other than what staff has approved at this time. Did we require a master plan from any of the other folks that developed in the nearby areas? For example, Catalina Point, Halifax Village? Yes, that is customary. Is there a specific reason why we're not requiring it from this specific site? So what staff is working with is, is the 2010 approval um, from uh, what was originally approved within that development agreement. So essentially that's what we, we are working with. Um, if there's requests from the commission to see certain things, then you all have the ability to request. What is the, what, do you, what type of trip count study are you working with? What year? Um, right now, the uh, vested trips that we have um, most available, best available data is from the 2010 um, TIA that was approved and entitled for this site. So we're working with trip counts that are outdated. Um, essentially, they are vested, um, but yes, we do have a new generation of IT trip menu um, at this time. Did we request an updated trip count from the developer or the, the, part, the applicant? Um, the, app, uh, the applicant did provide a, based on the equivalency matrix, because initially they were requesting to add uses in with their initial request. That has changed um, since they're just upping the cap. Um, so at this time, staff is looking at the numbers based on the original approval. The, the, the reason I'm asking for that, I have an article here from April 3rd, 2023, that labels Daltona, Daytona, Ormond Beach 15th in the state, 15th. In, in worse traffic, right? And we don't have an updated trip count, all right? On top of that, I have several studies that I personally looked at that demonstrate that after COVID, Americans are out more in the streets than they used to be, a lot more, not by a little, but by a lot. So I think when, when we, we're moving forward, and I'm very impressed by you, Joe, don't take this the wrong way, but moving forward, we need to start asking that we get updated trip counts. This, using trip counts from other times, that's not gonna work anymore. We need to make sure that's updated. Um, I got a couple more bullet points that I wanna talk about. I looked at the Volusia County, and I know this is done by the district, and you know I, I know one of the other commissioners always brings this up. We have, if you can bring that up really quick for me, Joe, on the monitor, I specifically requested for us to look at something when it comes to Timbercrest Elementary, Galaxy Middle School, and Daltona High School. We're looking at the percentage of capacity of, on there. We're looking at Timbercrest at 123%. I specifically called our Volusia County School Board member about plans for a capacity increase and long term, the answer was no um, on all three of those schools. On top of that, if we look towards the bottom, it literally says that the school board has the right to tell the kids that they, they have to go to a different school. So now we're not only putting uh, wear and tear on this specific area, but we're putting it on other areas in our community. So technically, this notice that went out to a couple dozen people should have probably gone on to more because we don't know where these kids are gonna be sent. 
I'll leave the school issue to someone else on this dais because I'm sure they're gonna bring it up. Um, how many bedrooms are being put in uh, these apartments? Are they one bedroom apartments, two bedrooms, three bedrooms? Do we have a number? Uh, they vary. I can go off of what the first phase of Integra, I believe it was uh, one to three bedroom. Okay. So they, they do vary in size and bedrooms. Marsha, when it comes to property rights, do, are we obligated to approve this without violating anybody's property rights on this property? I think the commission has discretion with regards to bringing up specific issues that you feel create a problem with the approval. And this is the first hearing, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, so this is the kind of thing where, you know, if the commission feels strongly about a number of these issues, then we can continue it and try and work with the applicant to see if we can, you know, find Thank something. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look, I'm not against apartments, right? I'm not against apartments at all. But this is a gateway to our city. The issue that I'm having is I'm excited about Deltona Village. I'm not excited about Apartment City, which is what it looks like. We have Deltona High School that's literally right there. All right, we just had a mass, we just had a, a, a tragic accident happen over distracted drivers. We're using a trip count from 2010. We're in 2023, that's 13 years old. We just had a massive pandemic. The change, a lot of people have changed in everything that they do. So I, I'm gonna leave my the rest of my comments there for later. I'll call on Commissioner McCool, then Commissioner Jody Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of things that I want to clarify also. I will start here. Um, our comp plan and reading the comp plan said that the land would ideally be used for commercial or office type uses is what we started out that, that district with. But, um, and I understand it dates back to when the DRI was issued. And the DRI, for if you have not read that, um, it, it basically said that um, we're going to plan for this area in this way, which was for office, commercial, mixed use. However, in a speculative move, I guess property was purchased, and it didn't work out that way. So we had to go back and we had to redo this. And I'm going to fast forward to 2010. I'm not even going to stop in 2004. We're talking about the equivalency matrix. Um, I wanted to, this is something that would have been discussed during our, what, our moratorium that, like, didn't happen. These are one of the things that I take issue with, right, the equivalency matrix. Another thing that I don't have that I need, and especially for new commissioners, I would like to see is I want to see the new numbers of the dwellings that we have. I want to see our growth rate. I've asked for this before. And how many were housing? Because I'm watching the housing market right now, and I don't think that an extra 200 and something apartments are needed. If you're going to go off our comp plan and what our comp plan says and what it tells us to stick to, we must house our people, but we must not overhouse our people. We must do the best thing. So I want to take a look at that. Question number two, will we benefit, will the city of Deltona, okay, because we all know that we're trying to get on sewer, okay, right, we're trying to sewer up, right, does the city of Deltona benefit from the utilities here? So this utility service area is actually down north, Volusia County. Volusia uh, so County, so be bingo. To county utilities. Yeah, both both utilities. So sewer and water will be going to Volusia. We do not get any of that revenue. We do not get any of that tax base. So check that out. I want to clarify the. I want to clarify here because it just, I don't know, it goes back and forth on the matrix that's used here. How many units per acre for this development is being considered? Because it says one to eight, right? So how many does that work out to? How many units does that work out to per acre here? So, Commissioner, I'm sorry, when you say one to eight, what is that? What, the, what where does the, that come from? What the allotment is here. Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go back there. 
I what does the zoning, the, the current zoning say, how many units can be per acre there, the density guide? So currently they're allowed to do up to 414 uh, units Yep. based on the entitlements. Your typical entitlement within the activity center is up to 20 dwelling units per acre based on the future land use. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, that clarification. Um, I also want to go to um, where we talk about, I want to go back to FL1-7.16, okay? Applicants requesting amendments to the zoning and or future land use map shall be evaluated with respect to consistency with the goals, objectives, and policy of all elements. Other timely issues, and in particular, the extent to which the proposal, if approved, would satisfy deficiency in the future land use map to accommodate projected population or economic growth of the city. So I want to talk about that because I want those, those numbers in real life time, what we have now, how many units, what that what that number is for this year based on the census, and I want the commission to see that in real life time because I want that vested interest of unit to growth. That's what I need to I need to understand that. Um, maintain or improve the city's ratio of non-residential lands to residential lands available for economic use. Support efforts to increase the provision of a viable mixture of land uses in a compact walkable area that's accessible to the full range of feasible non-motorized and motorized transportation. Okay. C, enhance or impede the provision of services at adopted LOS standards. What are our current LOS standards? Like, I don't know that as far as we're asking for in the upcoming budget, uh, new sheriffs because of traffic issues that we have. And it's going to go back to traffic here. I have a problem with the traffic count from 2010. How can I make a decision today based on data that far back? I can't. Um, the impact of the economy on the affected area. I mean, I'm just going to go back over this. And I'm asking a, a question. How is it going to impact us economically? Because it says we it will benefit us economically. I need to understand how that's going to do that. Adding 200 extra units, seeing how none of the utility water or utilities will come back to us, and how close we are in proximity to the interstate. And, and I can't get behind using the Amazon example as thousands of jobs because I, I just I can't make this all mesh with these numbers. So, and the last thing that I want to also um, have a concern about and tell you that I have a concern about is the concurrency from the Board of Education. And it doesn't come from the Board of Education. This comes from the school district. I'm going to have a problem with this. Timmercrest Elementary, 123% of permanent capacity. Okay, and what this fails to tell you is that at the city level and at the school district level, they are not taking into consideration the teacher shortage, which further inflates this number. This is not even a real number. This is like not worth the paper it's written on because it doesn't tell the true tale. And we're not asking for those numbers, and we should have those numbers if we're talking about true currency for our kids. And 93% Galaxy Middle and Deltona High, 98% already. So I want to understand that we're, we're over capacity in our education system also. Now, do we have to, um, do we have to abide by this legally? Um, yeah, we do have to, but when we talk about what they say in here and what our saving grace is here is that it talks about level of service. Level of service being our students reasonably accommodated, and they're not. They are over underserved here with this right here. So I will be following the legal letter of the law with that. So I need those numbers before, I mean, at, right now I'm a no because I don't have real numbers to make a real decision. And the report is great, the report is succinct, but it is very flawed to me, um, and I'm not, I'm not satisfied. I'm not good with that going on in our city. It's not what I want for our city. Thank you. Commissioner Jody Lee and then Vice Mayor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Commissioner McCool, I, I agree with your assessments, your comments, and all. 
course, I don't agree with every part. I went over to the property. I looked at the property. The apartments look real nice. They look beautiful. But uh, my overall comments right now is I want to make a motion to deny this re the rezoning of the ordinance number 04 2023 request to amend the Deltona Public Vi Village Business Plan Unit de Development, overall development plan, master development plan to increase the number of multifamily allocation. I, I just, it's, it's a little bit too big, the traffic. Like you said about the utilities, Deltona, everybody says we benefit. I don't know where we benefit except for adding another 3,000 cars in front of our uh, a place that's so packed and full now. Traffic there is insane. I mean, I've lived here since 89 and I have no desire to get off that exit anymore. It's getting, it's getting much. The schools over there are getting to be too much. I spoke to our school board too also and he couldn't make it here tonight because I asked him some questions and I wanted him to answer a question if it was gonna be good for our schools or not. And he wasn't happy about it either, but he has to go with what the laws and the development is. I think at right now, at this time, I think it's a bad idea, so I wanna make a motion to deny it. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Bradford, and I, I recognize your motion, but let's go to Vice Mayor Bradford and then Commissioner Burbank. Actually, we have to address his motion. We can't skip his motion. He either fails or he passes. Commissioner Jody Lee, would you like to withdraw your motion until the other two commissioners speak? I'll second. I'll second. I second his motion. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor, a second by Commissioner McCool. May We're gonna go ahead and vote, but before we vote, we Mayor need to listen. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, the applicant has requested to speak prior to voting on the motion. Absolutely, and we have to listen to public records as well yeah, before, so yep. please, applicant. I believe, Marshall, you have to swear in. Uh, no. Okay, no? Okay. I want just some clarification of whether or not we're just addressing this motion at this point or whether I'm concerned that we have some issues that may need to be addressed. We had requested some meetings. Uh, we unfortunately only were able to meet with a few of you um, that we could address the vested rights as to the traffic. We could address the, 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 um, the intention and how we get this Deltona Village to a town center. We can't get it to a town center without having having the, the residential element of it to generate the interest for the sit-down restaurants. Um, so there's some dynamics that play into the reason that we're asking for this so that we can generate the higher and the better retail and the sit-down restaurants. Um, so there's some some other things that might be helpful um, and to understand the, what, what this request is because it, it also there's some incorrect information in that there was an overall master development plan. There is a master development plan attached to your application right now. Um, you can see where the, the roadways are. We, we primarily have Energy Avenue, which was the connection for the Amazon, which we worked with Amazon to try to make that happen. Um, then you have the internal roadways for the uh, theater, and you have um, the internal roadways for <coughs> the existing out parcels. Um, all those are internal roadways. There are no other than um, the proposed, which is called the master sergeant right of way that runs between this project and the high school. Uh, Rhode Island, it's our understanding, has now moved over to Wolfpack uh, Run. And so as far as a grid of the right of way, that has always been consistent with the overall master development plan that was adopted back in 2010. Um, the traffic analysis that was done originally historically, the DRI, the Southwest Activity Center, was not moving forward. And the reason it wasn't moving back and forward back in 2009 when it started was because there were interlocal agreements that were required to be made with the county and with the land and with Orange City, and those agreements had never been entered into. So when this developer started assimilating the land, Deltona asked the developer to concede and to consent to the vacation of the DRI. And as part of
part of that was a result of this BPUD. So there were already vested rights that were established under the DRI that were attached to this property. And in cooperation with the city of Deltona, this BPUD ordinance was created so that the city could vacate the DRI because there were a lot of requirements in that DRI that the city felt was restraining the development. And so this developer, relying now on the uh, approvals by in that BPUD, which are derived from that DRI, which consisted of overall traffic analysis for the entire activity center. The BPUD adopted certain uses in this overall development plan and master development plan. It adopted certain square feet of retail space that could be built, which was the 900 square feet that has been referenced before, and other uses, industrial uses, um, and specific other uses that could be built within this overall project, which consists of the 140 acres. This is a vested development agreement. So despite the fact it was in 2010, it was a study that was done anticipating a 900,000 square foot retail units. The equivalency matrix that's contained in this ordinance allows an interchanging of uses. And in this case, the request for multifamily is a reduction in the trips because a multifamily has a much greater, lesser impact than retail commercial. So we're actually reducing the traffic impact with this request. The purpose of, we have 414 units that have been approved already. There are 301 that are being built out there now. And the difference of the 238 units is so that Integra can complete a second phase. That, that along with what you approved in the wellness uh, Halifax area, are we're gonna start now seeing more growth potential for these sit-down restaurants and these town center-like uses like you see in Heathrow. Heathrow has a significant residential development that, because that can support the restaurants, that can support the retail use. Uh, we also have, uh, whether it is adequate or not, the school board has indicated that there is uh, uh, the, the um, provision of services available. There'll be 45 students provided by this new increase in units. Um, uh, and as uh, any, you know, as the remainder of the, uh, we've got Amazon, we have the Bavarian, Nutty Bavarian now that's doing manufacturing. We have a substantial other industrial site that's going to the um, south of the project. This multifamily project is going to provide a walkable community that is going to create that town center. They can go to their jobs at Amazon. They can go to their jobs at the Bavarian, uh, Nutty Bavarian, that is going to create um, a walkable community, a pedestrian-like community that will support a town center-like environment. Without these types of multiple mixed-use developments, we're not going to be able to create that town center env environment. Um, also, uh, you know, if, if you're leaning towards um, if you have other questions, I mean, we, we have met with, new, we've had numerous meetings. This, this application has actually been pending for almost a year. We have had numerous meetings over and over with the city manager. We had, uh, the prior city manager had a different idea of what he wanted. We've tried to work with him to get that accomplished. We have now been working with the new city manager, which we've accomplished more with him, and we, we accomplished the entire time we were uh, with the prior city manager. Um, so, uh, you know, the concerns that you have regarding the, the traffic, I think that they're really addressed by the, the existing BPUD. The, the rights vested in that BPUD entitle the developer to interchange the uses for traffic. Each site that comes in for site development, there may be other design requirements that require traffic studies. There may be other uh, triggers within the development agreement that will require traffic studies. Um, but this particular request is consistent with your comp plan. It's specifically consistent with the BPUD. It's consistent with the overall development plan that we have. Um, and it, it, some of the uh, concerns that you have, I think, are addressed in the existing development agreement. Um, so we are here to answer any questions. We are here to also, it's clearly from, from the staff report, 
it's clear that this application is consistent with your comprehensive plan. It's consistent with your, uh, specifically, as Joe has indicated uh, in the staff report, with the goal, FLU2, it meets the 15% requirement within the Activity Center for Residential Development. It meets the zoning limitations and restrictions. Uh, potentially, there are 45 acres in the development Deltona Activity Center, which at 20 units per acre, which would be 900 units, we're asking for 238 additional units for a total of 652. The policy of uh, FLU1-7.16, um, specifically states that requesting the amendments to the zoning and our future land use are to be evaluated with the consistency with the goals, objectives, and policies of the elements and timely issues. Um, this is maintaining and to improve the city's ratio of non-residential lands to residential lands available for economic use. There is a, a, a wide consistency of our, our compatible development here with the residential use as well as the commercial use. You're enhancing and, uh, and uh, the provision of services adopted LOS standards, um, and you're compatible with abutting and nearby land uses. Specifically, you're trying to create a development where these uses are all within the near vicinity so that we can lessen the impact on traffic, so you have a walkable community, so you have pedestrian-friendly community of which they can walk to their job, they can walk to a restaurant, they can walk to a retail store. That's the whole purpose of creating this um, mixed-use development, which is consistent with your FLU 1-2. 2.3, a mixed use developments in appropriate locations in order to discourage, sprawl, and promote energy efficient and development patterns. Specifically, that is what we're trying to do here with this, uh, with this amendment to the BPUD. We're trying to prevent further sprawl. We're creating residential development and that is consistent with the pedestrian walkable communities. So it's going to also promote, as, as more industrial uses are created there, You've got to have a place for them to reside. You've got to have a place for them to reside in nearby to their work. Also, more people are actually working from home as well. Um, but you, you need to have a place that they can go and, and in order for people, in order for uh, restaurants and to sit down restaurants to come to the area, they have to have a population that is going to stay in the area. And it's unfortunately, we don't have that population now because they commute to different areas, so they don't return to the area until after work hours. So therefore, the numbers are not there to support those walk up, the, the uh, sit-down restaurants. So we're trying to create a, a, an atmosphere and a, a plan that is going to create that and, and draw those types of uses to this town center. Um, Also, they're going to, uh, on most of the uh, roads within the community are going to, are all internal. They're private roads. They're maintained by the developer, at no cost to the city. The water and sewer is provided by the county, but that's because that's where the services are available. If, if Deltona was providing those services, we'd be more than happy to obtain those services for them. I don't believe that where the services are coming from should be a legitimate reason for denying this application. Um, also, we've met the requirement for the school board, and they have provided us with a letter. And to deny this application based on the fact that we don't have a, a capacity when we have at least, we have complied with the requirement to obtain a adequate capacity determination, and the school board has indicated such dated March 27, 2023, and that's in your packet as well. Um, Um, if anybody has any more questions regarding the development, we'll be happy to answer them. Um, if the commission would like more time to understand that, the specifics, we are also open to a continuance to allow that to happen. 
We're gonna, would you like to ask a question to the presenter? So by, we're gonna ask questions to the commission. We have a motion on the floor with a second. This time we're only gonna ask questions to the uh, presenter. So Vice Mayor Bradford, then Commissioner Burbank, then Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Can you explain, and you guys have been going through this since 2016, since I've been here, my number one question has been, what's going on around the, the theater? What's going on? Where's our restaurants? How's this happening? That's been the number one question I've had for six years. This developer, our property owner, has been trying for how many years? Maybe. To work with the city. As you stated, you guys were, and I know that since I've been working with it, you know, I've dealt with a lot of the wonderful dealings that you've had with different staff, different city managers. Every city manager that's come in has demanded something new that you guys have um, tried to work with. So when all the individuals want to question, where's the restaurants? Where is this, where is that? Understand why. Apartments bring many aspects to a city. I may not choose to live in an apartment, but apartment living is well known for different age groups from your first time couple living out. How many families are living with families? Because they can't afford the down payment, the security deposit, and they live in apartments. So is living in apartments a bad thing? Absolutely not. As you've stated, that's very, it, it, it. let's throw a couple points out. Apartments, they're affordable. How many families, new and seniors, cannot afford a new home? They cannot afford to, to go throw a couple hundred thousand dollars on a house. Maintenance, how many seniors and young kids again, and individuals, all ages. Some people just want an apartment because they don't want to have maintenance. Location and flexibility. I can personally tell you, I know of some of these developments that are coming to this area, are coming to the area because of Deltona Village. They specifically brought those businesses here, and now I feel like, and I'm sorry to say, we're stabbing them in the back. They work their butts off to bring the businesses that are coming in around, let's talk the Nutty Bavarian, the storage unit, other businesses, Starbucks. They're not here because of that. They're here because these guys brought them to us. And now we're gonna stab them in the back and say, I don't like apartments. I'm sorry, I don't like a lot of things, but I can't base my decision on my personal preference. I live in this district. This is district two. So yes, I know a lot of what they've gone through just to be where they're at today. I get the calls, I get the emails, I get the ho, 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 when you gonna put something other than cows around the movie theater? We like our meat cooked, not raw. I get the jokes all day long. But you know how long those cows are gonna be there? As long as we sit up here and we keep dictating time and time again, change it from this to this to this to this to this. To this. If we would have allowed them to develop this, say, 12 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, maybe the traffic would be less, maybe the schools would allow it. So let's wait another 10 years, and then by then, what's gonna happen then? What more excuses are we gonna have? Can you explain what vested means exactly? And can you also explain again, because we do have a lot of new individuals up here and I don't think they quite understand when we say you guys have been put through the ringer, you've been put through the ringer. Yes, the, I mean this project has been trying to develop <laughs> since How many years 09. has this been going on, since 2008? Well, two th actually they started in 2004 with uh, the ICC 20 property, years. but 2009 with the, the BPUD. So they've been so trying can, for years to get this off the ground. So can you explain a little bit more in detail what vested means? Vested rights are rights that the developer is entitled to by law based on a prior development order. And in this case, there, it, the development order that was adopted um, in 2010 contains is a very detailed information and analysis regarding the traffic reports. The, the development agreement, which I believe is in your packet, 
had specific numbers in it regarding the square footage, the trips, the trip reservations, the improvements that had to be done to the right-of-way in order to vest those trips, which were completed. Um, and so everything was done in, in accordance with the development word to entitle the developer to those trip reservations. And those trip reservations were originally part of and uh, that analysis is part of the DRI because they intended to attract developers to be able to give them a, an established trip reservation and numbers and make the activity center a development that could be movable within it. So the intention was so you could attract people to come to this activity center so you could create a working environment, you could create a town center, you could create more intense development within this activity center. And so those trip reservations are contained in the, the BPUD ordinance that was adopted. The developer is entitled to those trip reservations based on um, the, de the development agreement that was approved um, by this commission. They are also entitled pursuant to the equivalen equivalency matrix that's contained in that development agreement to move these uses around back and forth as long as they uh, use that table and stay within the initial parameters and the traffic reservations that were, tri trip reservations that were established in that agreement. So to deny this application based on traffic, the traffic that is vested in that agreement will never be used. There is so much of it. it this property will be developed and there will be leftover trip reservations. This, this developer cannot use all of them. So the, the position that this developer is not doing what's required of him in connection with the transportation or traffic is totally incorrect in, because he, he is entitled and, is, and has vested rights established in that development agreement to build pursuant to that development agreement, which contains trip reservations. So one more question. So the new additional property that you're trying to add on over by Moshmeyer, and that's not where you're putting the, doing the request for the new apartments, correct? No, we're not requesting any additional uses for that site. It's going to, uh, in, that develop area will be developed in accordance with the overall development plan that's already been approved. Right. The, the apartments are going next to the existing apartments <laughs> um, so that they can create a viable uh, apartment complex there that will provide services and directly you know, in connection with Amazon okay. and those areas and the, the movie theater. Okay, because there was rumors that that's why you wanted to put that there is because you're no. putting apartments. Okay, so no. that has nothing to do with apartments whatsoever. You're sticking no. with your development on that. No, we're asking for phase two, Integra, if, if we can get this done, to be right uh, adjacent to the existing parcel that is being developed for apartments. It's at, uh, in the back near the uh, movie theater. And I don't see, and maybe I missed it in here, I did not actually see like a, a plan. Are you guys able to talk about any potential businesses that were looking at coming to that area at this point or no? We have quite a few, but we I can't, know. I don't know if any of the ones uh, that we no. can disclose okay. right now. Thank you. We have quite a few pending. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. So I met with um, the um, developer and the, and the lawyer. Yes, Kim Booker. Sorry. Oh, and yeah. the um, I saw the sketch that they had shown to um, when they came to the meeting. I found it very interesting because uh, to me. It was something that a lot of people in Deltona have, about, have been asking for. Um, it's apartments, but in that same area, there was a lot of spaces for businesses, whether they be restaurants, whether they be offices, that's something to tell in the future. But I can tell you that during my campaigning, there were a lot of residents who questioned, why doesn't Deltona have more apartments? Affordable. So, 
you know, we are building apartments, and I can tell you that Integra are very high class apartments. Um, whether they pay in water or utilities to the city, I think I have th two, maybe two communities in District 3. They're part, of, they're part of the county, they're not part of the city. We have other areas in the city that pay water to the county or their county and pay water to the city. So we're gonna find things like that all over the place. The taxes that these apartments are gonna be paying, Joe, uh, they come into the city and they're not homestead. Yeah. They're gonna be mixed. Um, and this is one of the projects that PNZ actually approved six to one. I'm sorry, I listened to your comments. Um, so here again, this is something that the city residents have been asking for, maybe not you, but I can tell you that I knocked on a lot of doors during my campaign, and a lot of people are asking for apartments. So um, we all have different definitions of what we want to see. I think this is a start of what we want to see in that area. We're not tearing down any, uh, any trees. The land is already vacant. They already have apartments there. They just want to add additional apartments to what's already being built there. The school already approved, gave them a, a letter of approval. Unfortunately, we have nothing to do with that. So I just, I just don't see a problem with this here. I think this is a star, even for what we want to see as a downtown uh, for the city of Deltona. Um, the drawing is right there. There's a lot of possibility for commercial areas, restaurants. There's other things coming up around here in that area. I think maybe even some hotels from what I hear. Um, so this is a start, you know, uh, this is a start for what we want to see in the future. Um, so that's all I have to say. Okay, I'm going to ask a couple questions, then we have Commissioner McCool, Com Commissioner Jody Lee, and then Commissioner Burbank. So does anyone know how much are these apartments going to cost, roughly? We're not the developers for the site, so... Uh, so, don't we don't know how, so we don't know if it's affordable. Is that what we're saying? Well, uh, yes. I mean, they're Integra. Okay. They are all over. They are on veterans. Uh, they it. are on... They're very nice, uh, standard. Sure. And, and I have people I know that live in them, you know, that they're paying an affordable price for it, but I can't testify as to what they're going to charge at this okay. point. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, because I keep hearing affordable thrown out. We do need affordable housing, but we, we got to be careful because we're saying they're affordable and we're saying we're stabbing people in the back, but we don't even know what the price of these apartments are going to be. So I appreciate that. Uh, just a quick comment on the restaurant. So we have Amazon that has over a thousand employees per Team Volusia. We have Halifax that has over five to 600 employees. I got this information myself. We have a crowd there, a crowd that stays specifically in that area that we didn't have before. So this notion that by adding more apartments that somehow, you know, the restaurants all of a sudden are going to want to be there. There's already, there's already a crowd there that doesn't eat in Deltona because there is no restaurants. That's one of the issues that we're having is everybody throws out that we don't have this magic number and nobody knows how to define it. I've already come up with a conclusion where I've called several restaurants and we, we have the numbers. We just haven't built it. That's, that's another thing. Did you guys build, uh, is this the same Integra and DeBerry? The developer, yes. I believe, is the same one. Okay. And the reason I ask that is because they had the same kind of situation with the schools uh, when they built this in, in DeBerry, and sure. they ended up having to do something with the school board because they didn't have capacity in that school, so they had to kind of bust the kids to a different school. Th this is why this is why we're, we're bringing it up. It's not that we're trying to attack the developer or the property owners or anything like that, is because 
look, we, we all live in the city. We all have a vested interest, right, in making sure that we have projects that are great. Um, I'm going to ask you one more time, Miss uh, City Attorney, are we violating the property owner's rights by declining to approve this? Because I'm now hearing that they have a vested interest, and I understand and I know what this is, but just for clarification, you are the city attorney. You're here to protect us from lawsuits. If we vote no, are we violating their property rights? It depends on the basis for your decision. Excuse me. Um, you know, when we've had, <clears throat> when we've when we've had quasi-judicial hearings, um, I always explain that you need to have reasons for your motions and your actions. So depending on how you all vote, you need to explain your reasons. When we talk about vested rights, it's not that simple. Sure. Some of what they had going back to 2010 is vested. They're asking for additional, and they're asking to include additional land. That's not vested, and Joe can probably give you better specifics than I can. So it's not a simple, Mayor, I swear to you that you won't in, you won't have any kind of litigation if you deny it. But what Thank I you. will tell you is we have a lot of information that we can offer to this mix, too. And that's why I guess I would say, if you'd like, because this is a developer that has been in the community for a long period of time, if the majority of you don't want to approve this, then perhaps a continuance would be something you might consider to see if based on the things you all are saying. Thank you, Marsha. Okay. Thank you. The last point I'm going to make, we look, a lot of people are coming to Deltona. It's not a coincidence. We have over a thousand people moving into the state of Florida on a daily basis. So obviously there's going to be a need not only in Deltona, but everywhere for, for more housing. So I just think Specifically in that area, we, we are literally jam-packing so, so much housing. We're, right now, the traffic is out of control. If I'm not mistaken, I read an email where we had two police officers just changed over to Holland Boulevard. We, we really need to sit down and think about this because this, again, I, we are specifically me. I'm very grateful for, for the family that's been in this community. They've had to, obviously, you know, they built a theater. They try to create something. But unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm not supporting this. Commissioner McCool and then Commissioner Burke. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. First of all, <clears throat> traffic in the area, talking about that as far as residential over commercial. Commercial would at least be tax generating. And as it stands, it's not as it is right now. So that's what my... Um, I want commercial in that area. And to compare Deltona to Heathrow is disingenuous. I, I just got to say that right now because we're not. What Two very distinct... Two very distinct area, two very distinct areas, and we're not. Businesses have had, we've had the numbers and population to support that business, and that area out there is growing. And to say that we're going to fail our community by denying 250 units, which is profit for the developer, right? Which is profit for the developer is also disingenuous. The the jobs aren't guaranteed out there. To say that they are, it's a roulette wheel there. The jobs are not guaranteed out there. Um, so there's that also. Um, there's the affordable housing. We can't make sure that this is affordable housing. You can't say it's what the market bears and they're going to be out, you know, bearing the market. Um, th these apartments we talked about for, we talked about being for seniors and multifamily. I hope that these, the developers putting elevators in these if we're talking about that, you know. We keep going back to the education component here. The education here already says that they're over capacity and our comprehensive plan allows us to deny something if it's over capacity. The school district is, they're, they're saying two different things on this piece of paper right here. They're over capacity here. And our comp plan says that we don't have to approve based on that. And the reasons that we get to not approve something can be as simple as something subjective as it doesn't meet the character of the area. So legally, I've, I understand that. 
this, this, I have a problem with the traffic and I have a problem with this. I have a problem with not updated traffic areas. And, and to say that I'm not for my city and development, that's not true. You're entitled to build here. You can't, you know, we, you, you have that entitlement. Take that entitlement. What you're asking for is extra. And I, as a commissioner, have to do what I think is best for my community. And I wanted to see, and I've seen, I don't ask questions that I don't already know the answer to. I've seen what the numbers are, and we need to go back as a city and understand what housing stock we have, compare it to who's moving in the area, compare it to what is affordable and what we're doing, and compare it to the downturn in the market and what the housing market is doing. I don't have those updated numbers. I don't have them here in my paperwork, but I know what they are. I'm not telling this developer I don't want this developed. This is what we should have been doing all along. I'm just saying that you're not entitled to that extra that is going to put extra traffic and extra here without putting any money in my in my pocket here. I have real concerns about this. So I just don't want to be bullied into voting. I'm not saying no to the whole development. I'm saying that I want to vote what's entitled to because we have an, an issue in that area. Commissioner Burbank? <laughs> Uh, good, good evening. Thank you. Um, that's been so long, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, about, I don't know, 20 some odd years ago, I finagled my way onto the Planning and Zoning Board, and all told, I spent about 14 years on the PNZ Board. When I wasn't on the PNZ Board, I was staff here both as a planning manager and as a acting director of development services. I have hosted many visioning sessions. I have hosted town halls. I've been to more meetings probably than everybody sitting on this dais combined. And what I've heard over and over and over and over again in all these things is restaurants. They want sit-down restaurants. They have to have sit-down restaurants. We don't have the numbers yet. We just do not. Uh, and if we did, they'd be coming, and they will be coming once we get those numbers. I have heard the people speak for 20 some odd years, and the only way we're going to get people in there is have people living in Deltona. We have two choices. We can do something like this, put, in, put out apartments out by the interstate highway, which is a nice place for them, or we can approve more subdivisions out in the hinterlands with 50 and 55 foot wide lots, something I'm not in favor for at all. And uh, other than that, I have no questions whatsoever, but I would have no objection to tabling this for give us time to think this over a little bit further. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, can we please call those that have uh, standing, please? There are no public comments with standing. Okay, can we move over to public comments then? Okay, Kathy Bryan, please. Okay, good evening. Um, I'm, I'm with the lot that uh, is talking about the, the, let's not do the extra stuff right now. I think a continuance is a good idea. I, I keep hearing about restaurants. People want restaurants. They want sit-down restaurants. What I see, I see is we've already got a McDonald's. We've got a Burger King. I see a Wendy's, another hamburger joint. I see a Popeye's. I see a Panda Express. All fast, they're, they're fast food joints. Give me a break. Um, they, they talked about how it was going to decrease traffic because you got all these back roads and people can walk. What about the rest of Deltona? Remember, we're a big city that, that are going to have to drive those roads and get in there. Okay, so the other issue is you've got Halifax on this side, you've got this on the other side, and, and you've got stuff on opposite sides of the road, and there's still been nothing addressed about people, pedestrians, who want to be able to cross. Deltona Village has a flyer that I was looking at earlier, and it's got a map with a few different radiuses and talking about travel times, 10, 15 minutes. I'm really curious, when when were they driving? And number one, is that 10, however many, five miles as the crow flies? Or is that five miles via our roads? Because if they took that trip in the morning or the evening during rush hour traffic, it's it's going to take longer um, than that. I, I don't have an issue with the apartments. I don't have an issue with the apartments are. But to add even more, when we've already got issues that we can't um, get the county 
involved in so far as updating our the county roads that we have for infrastructure. Okay, so they're going to be on Del North and uh, water, and they're going to be not on our sewer. There's no reclaimed water. There, you know, there's a lot, and, and, and matter of fact, you're out of reclaimed water, aren't you? <laughs> um, unfortunately, you know, really unfortunately, um, it, 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 you're asking a lot of this. And then I thought I heard that the Rhode Island extension was going to go down to Wolfpack Run. Why? You're coming out, uh, it's bad enough you're coming out right next to the high school here, but now you're going all the way around the high school and coming out where a lot of parents in that back neighborhood come to drop off their kids. Traffic was bad back in 2016 when I was taking my kids to school. It hasn't gotten any better. Um, so parking for these apartments. Are we going to do a parking garage? It's going to be flat lot, I bet, because everybody likes to build all the way across Florida instead of trying up a little bit um, where you have more, more green space. Um, Somebody already addressed the, the, the point about the income, low income housing because I heard they're high class ap apartments but then they're supposed to be low, low income and there's nothing wrong with having a nice looking apartment because it's low, but you know, what's your consideration of, of affordable and, and my con consideration of affordable may be two whole different things because I think apartments are outrageous these days. I don't think the Rhode Island Wolfpack run is, is a good idea at all and mainly because of the kids in the high school and you all of you know my issues with the pedestrians and traffic. Um, they were talking about the apartments, you know, people walking and stuff like that. Are you sure all these people in the apartments are going to be working at these businesses? I'm not. That's it. Thank you, Adam Basquez, please. Good evening. The whole um, clown puppet thing is starting to resonate a little bit better here for me. Um, we were just trying to be sold that we need apartments to get restaurants, but here's a concept. Why don't we just build the restaurants first? Yeah. I mean, there's already apartments there. So that's the other thing I heard is there's already existing apartments. Schools are over capacity. We want our mixed use entertainment area. Like this is a perfect area for it. I think that, you know, when you have a city full of 100,000 people that are already going down Howland, probably to get on I-4 to go to Sanford or somewhere, maybe they might stop there if you build an entertainment district and not get on the highway. Um, the other thing, uh, Commissioner, um, because you know maybe one day the, the constituents of District 3, maybe my constituents, I would love to go knock on those doors um, of the people who want to give up their homes for apartments and just see. I mean, I, I just don't see that as happening. You do have a valid point. They're not homestead at properties, but businesses bring in more taxes. Um, there's other taxes that are assessed on the tangible personal property that they have in those businesses that would not apply to apartments. So yeah, I'm not anti-apartment, but let's build the, the, down, the entertainment district first, give a place for the existing residents to go, and then maybe let's talk about you know adding 600 more apartments. And the traffic issue, I mean, you guys have all gotten my email by now about building an expressway through Deltona to kind of handle the volume, and I haven't heard that go anywhere, only from a couple of you guys, um, but maybe if you want to add 600 apartments there, it'd be cool for them to go get on a freeway to get on I-4 instead of Hallam Boulevard at a traffic light at surface level that's already backed up. That, that area is already a cluster. Um, it needs to be a mixed-use, dense, urban area, um, not, not with apartments right now. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Bryant, please. Albert Bryant, Daltona. You know, I sat here and listened pretty intently about some of this stuff. It's funny. I heard the, the vested interest they have in traffic. Well, what about my vested interest? I've been here 30 freaking years, and yet I haven't heard anything about that. I've heard about theirs, but not ours. So let's think about that just for a second, because I travel Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to and from Daytona Beach. When I come home, it takes me 20 minutes 
to get from the flea market in Daytona Beach to I-4 and Hallam Boulevard, 472. It takes me 30 minutes to go from that traffic light to my house. And that's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The least traveled days on that road and the least traveled times on that road. So if it takes me that long already, another 200 added to the 400 that they already have there is going to triple that time. Because we all know people in apartments, young and old, want to do something on the weekends. Go out early, come back late. What I consider late is between four and six. What I, what I consider going out between, let's say, seven and nine o'clock. So that's going to put that much more congestion on that road. That's one. Two, I keep hearing all this stuff about restaurants. You know, I could give a rat's butt about a restaurant in my town. You know what? I've got so many over in Del uh, Orange City, Sanford, Daytona Beach. I'm not afraid of driving just a little bit to go get something to eat. All that being said, I've also heard about the tax base. Well, last I heard, apartments are commercially taxed, basically, because they can't homestead. So is that a good thing? I think it is. Now, then we think, you know, what are these apartments going to be like? Well, from what I've seen, they actually look pretty decent. Do I have a problem with apartments? Nah. But to say that they're affordable to people that are going to work over at Amazon is a joke. I mean, that, that's a joke. Because maybe upper management could afford to live there, but the little guys running around inside the warehouse ain't going to be able to afford to live there. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it works. You know why I know that? Because my oldest daughter used to work for Amazon. She could barely make the $1,800 rent down, oh, that's right, Novito. Not here. So when you talk about apartments, let's see here. The base right now for rent in apartments, the base is $1,600. 60, and that's if you can really find one. And you're talking about a studio that has a single room that has the kitchen, the bathroom, and everything all in it in that one little space. Anything above that, you're talking $25, $28, $3,500. What 20-year-old, 25-year-old can afford that working at Amazon? Not very many. Now, somebody else said something about retirees. Retirees, if they're on fixed income, they sure in the age ain't going to be working or living in them apartments. They can't afford them. There's just no way. They'd rather rent a house that is $900 to $1,800 than they would an apartment. It's just simple facts of life, people. Thank you. Carolyn Hickerson, please. Thank you, my friend. Okay, so a couple of points. Integra has apartments in Sanford. A one bedroom, one bath goes between 1,536 to 2,021. This is in Sanford, not Deltona. A two bedroom, two bath, 1,100 square foot, between 2,000 and 2,400, a little over $2,400 a month. A three-bedroom, two-bath, 1,300 square foot, between $2,400 and $3,600 a month. That's affordable. I live on a fixed income of $1,800 a month as a retiree, and I have a four-bedroom house, and I can't afford that. I'm looking for assisted living for my mother, and I'm having to go probably to the land, or God only knows, because we're looking for assisted living for a senior citizen at five to seven thousand dollars a month. Now, thank God she has um, long-term care dis disability that will help pay for three thousand dollars of that, and then it will take the rest of her social security to put her into housing with dementia. That's affordable housing. 
We have homeless people in this community. We have people that are trying just to make it on 10 and $12 an hour who can't find a place to live. And they have a family of three or four, and we're asking them to pay $3,600 a month for three bedrooms? I'm sorry, that's not affordable. I disagree with you, Vice Mayor. I think that you are correct in your assumption, and just give them what they have already uh, agreed to, build restaurants, and then be done, because you're not doing any service to this community because we cannot afford it. And then to say, we can't, we don't have a base that can come to a restaurant. We are the largest freaking community in the state of Florida. We have the densest population in the state of Florida and we don't have enough people for a restaurant? Give me a break. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Collier, please. Um, do they have my pictures before my time starts? Okay, that's awesome. All right, I'm the teacher, as I've been referred to already. Um, who knows what this is a picture of? Clearly, you don't know because they didn't pass it out. Um, this is a pi I would like to see by a show of hands how many people know what the picture is. But anyways, it's a picture of uh, solely the responsibility of flooding Deltona, the city of Deltona. It is the 60 inch culvert, it is the weir. I'm gonna, design, I'm gonna explain real quick how a weir is designed, a weir is designed so that when the water goes over the top of Excuse it. Excuse me, sir. I don't want to interrupt you, but we're talking on the subject. That part of public comment has already passed. I apologize. It, it, it has to be specific to the subject on hand because this, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. I'm, I want to speak on the general comment. The general comments have already passed. Okay, well, all right, I got three minutes. No, sir, but it has to be specific to what we're talking about. It is, now. it is. Okay. Because this is gonna, the water's gonna go somewhere, right? Whatever you talk about, the water's gonna go somewhere. So there's a weir, a weir so is designed we're not so talking that, about the weir right now. But this is a development I, and water's going somewhere, right? It, it's, it's totally different. Look, I, so, I, I, I support us opening the weir, right? But th this has nothing okay. to do with the weir. All right, so anyways, all right. I, I'm not trying to be rude to you, no, but actually this is you part are. of public yeah, comment. All right, my ho here's the thing. I got two minutes and 30 seconds. You guys, I left my email address on there. You guys have the picture of where the weir is located. Sir, we're not no, going to talk about the weir. Okay, we're not talking about the weir. I'll be you more have than until happy for you to email me. I will sit down and go with you. You to have go until 5 p.m. tomorrow to let me know what's being addressed. Since you don't want to hear me talk about this, you guys can t contact me. Mr. Burbank has my email. I'm letting you know you're being grossly negligent. And I'm also letting you know that if you don't have an answer where you're going to put all this water, this 36 vertical Sir, inches of water. Sir, we're not talking about the weir. Okay, if you don't tell me where you're, what you're going to do, to alleviate that water, Sir, we are I'm going to post it on the city of Deltona, the and I'm going to post I GPS get all that, but we're not talking about Okay, the I'm just letting you know. Perfect. Thank Point. you. Thank you. Brandy White, please. Brandy White, Deltona. Uh, I just took some notes as I was sitting here listening, because originally I wasn't going to speak, but... Uh, some of the things that were brought up has already been addressed, but I'm going to go through my notes anyhow, uh, because I did have concerns that it was brought up that there had been other amendments. And the data for those amendments was still being used for 2010. Um, I understand um, that anything newer wouldn't be reflected, so Amazon wouldn't be uh, included in that. God, excuse me. Go ahead, Ms. White. So there's quite a few items in that area that have been built up since 2010, in, including the increase in residential. Um, so I don't believe that, sure, the traffic counts uh, for, let's say, what may be being brought in could typically be the same, but if you're gonna look at the total picture, you have to now include in your traffic count everything from Wawa, because that wasn't there, everything from the Burger King, everything from, you know, all these, Amazon, all these things have grown, but they're not in that traffic count if we're still looking at 2010 numbers. 
Um, I also wrote down, uh, thank you for already addressing the school issue. We bring this up time and time again. Um, that really needs addressed, obviously, at a larger level, but there are things that you as a commission can do here. Uh, the other thing, again, brought up, need 200 uh, more apartments to bring in restaurants and a town center. With, with 100,000 with, with 100, strong, that's just nonsense. Um, so that, of course, made me think what other comments could be nonsense. Um, the data supporting the statements that it's less traffic, I'd like to see that. Um, several uh, already gave answers to the utilities thing. We're getting off track. I didn't hear anybody say, let's deny it because we're not getting paid the utilities. The reason the utilities was brought up was because we're trying to figure out where that sentence that says the city will benefit, where does that lie? So the question was, does it lie in utility cost? Well, no, because it's not going to us. It was never a basis. So I, I saw a lot of confusion just sitting there and I wanna make that clear. Nobody's saying that that's a reason to deny is because we're not getting the money. We're saying that's not a benefit. So where is the benefit? That's, that's where the question kind of derailed. We still never got an answer of where the actual benefit lies. Um, and the apartments, uh, I did. I went on Zillow. I checked the Orange City Integra apartments. I also went to the Integra website. So one bedroom runs around 1,500, 1,600, depending on what type of unit, uh, all the way up to a little over $2,000. So, you know, again, pushing and saying, oh, the seniors need this. Okay, well, we're 400. There's 400 being built. We have the apartments over behind Publix on LCAM. We have apartments. So yes, the diversity is there. We are giving them the apartments everybody asked for. I don't see how the increase in this cap by 200 more apartments suddenly makes this apartment uh, town city now viable. And without it, it just won't be viable, is what I heard sitting there. That's nonsense. Again, we touched base on the vested rights. We, we're giving them the vested rights. Build the 400. We're just saying we're, we capped it for a reason, and we need to uh, support the reason we capped it. Uh, the uh, increases in traffic and density and such in that area has already increased and it, it's not even being considered in all the data we're talking about. Um, I'm out of time, so I'll leave the rest. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. This ends public comment. Okay, we have an actual motion that's on the floor in a second. Mr. Reese, you wanna do you wanna say something? No, no, I'm just no. waiting for the vote. Can we please go for a vote? Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Can, can we have the motion read again? I want to, to make a motion denying the request to amend a Deltona Village plan business plan unit development, overall development, master plan development plan. Deny the increasing number of multi unit allocation for the BPUD from 414 units to 652 units. So it was a motion to deny. So if we vote yes, we're accepting to deny the, correct, okay. Okay, so okay yes Commissioner V. Vasquez. Did you have something to say? Uh, okay, motion to deny. Okay, I got it. Go ahead, okay. Commissioner Vasquez. I vote no. I think that this is a uh, step moving forward to what we envision at the uh, village center. Um, so I vote no. Commissioner Burbank. I will also vote no. Uh, the reason that stays uh, is it's, it's, it's a we need more businesses and we need more of this, but we don't need more traffic. You cannot have one without the other. It's also something of a fallacy to say that we are the 100,000 strong, we're the largest city in Volusia County, Central Florida. That's, that is absolutely true. However, if you live down in her district, you're more likely to go to Sanford to eat than you will out here. This is, this is an activity center. This is going to make it active. The people who live there, most of them, a lot of them will work there, a lot of them will eat there. And I'm guessing that some of the people that the developer is talking to are probably the people that are looking at us real hard right now saying, okay, we're ready now to move in. We've got <coughs> No, thank you. Commissioner Colwell. I vote on yes. 
We can't hear you, Commissioner. We'll call. The current overcrowding of the school system, and as those kids get older and move from grade to grade, it's just going to inundate the upper grades. Commissioner Jody Lee. Now I'm voting yes to deny it. Uh, I, I would address the applicant, but he already left. But uh, uh, just with all the traffic and everything else that's going to go along with it, with the studies of 2010, we're not saying no to the apartments that are already been approved. We're saying no to add more apartments to it. So the restaurants and everything in the plan that was already there, those are still on. We're not saying no. We're saying no to adding more apartments. In District 6, I have yet to have someone knock on my door in all the years I've lived there asking for apartment buildings. So I'm, I'm saying no because we already have enough. Commissioner McCool. And I also, sorry. I also vote yes. I have concerns regarding traffic. I have concerns, serious concerns, regarding concurrency on this project. I'm not saying no to the project. I'm saying no to the additional units. We have enough out there, and with the addendum to that, I want to see updated projects with the, um, I want to see how many we have uh, moving and how many units we already have uh, planned. So my vote is yes to deny. Vice Mayor Bradford. No. Mayor Abila. I vote yes to deny because we have issues with the trip count being extremely old. We have issues of overcrowding and safety for our schools. We, we need an actual master plan, not what looks like one. We need an actual master plan. We need to stick to that master plan once we build it. And uh, we're not violating any of the applicant's property rights. They have the right to build right there. We're just denying the additional units. The motion to deny passes four to three. Okay, this time we're gonna go ahead and go to new business. Request for approval of recommendations for scholarship awards from William S. Harvey Deltona Scholarship Advisory Board. Ms. Rafferty. Okay, what I, I will read this on behalf of the chair, Christina Ramundo, and this is in regards to the, the two requests. Okay, good afternoon, and I apologize for the late notification. I'm feeling under the weather and will not be able to make it to the meeting today. I don't want to risk getting anyone sick. I did prepare a rational statement in the event of the commissioners, in the event the commissioners ask questions. The William S. Harvey Scholarship Committee made the two requests for the following reasons. The requested amount was, was at one time the original budget which allowed us to have greater impact support for those seeking academic support for college. When the current dollar amount is exhausted, we are sometimes left with others we feel can benefit from a scholarship, but there is nothing left. We feel strongly the higher scholarship award of $5,000 will attract more applicants, making the WSHS competitive as other scholarships being offered by other organizations. We can provide a higher dollar amount scholarship to those students with the highest academic achievement. The increase also helps with the rising cost of higher education. We feel it sends a message their city of Deltona recognizes their achievements and hard work and support supports their future endeavors. It shows we are interested in their success. Thank you. We have Commissioner Vila Vasquez and then Vice Mayor Bradford. Thank you, Mayor. May I like to uh, make a motion? I move to approve the 2023 William S. Harvey Deltona Scholarship Award recipients as presented. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Rio Vasquez and a second by Vice Mayor Bradford. Does anyone have any dialogue or conversation about it? Mm -mm. No? Can we please vote? The motion passes six to one. Mayor, do you want to address the two requests? So one of the requests, I thought that's what we were voting on right now. No, that was to award the scholarships okay. to, the, to the students, but they have requested 
the extra fifty thousand. So I am now guilty of voting for something that I thought I was going to not vote for. Okay, <laughs> sorry. All right. Would you like to address that? So the fifty thousand that they referred to was when we used to do recycling, and the recycling funds paid for these scholarships. When the recycling fund went away, it got lower to thirty thousand, and it is a budgeted item. So they are now asking you to budget an additional twenty thousand for these students. They are also asking that their um, their range for giving the the award is a thousand. Any, anywhere up to 3000 they want that 5000 and you guys are in charge of kind of the outline that they go by. So okay. whether you want to deny it or do that in the budget process, I mean, it's up to you guys. So Commissioner Burbank and Commissioner Vila Vasquez and Vice Mayor Bradford, and again, that's what I thought initially we were going to vote on, so. Go ahead. I, we can hear you, Commissioner Burping. Uh, okay. It's like launching the shuttle. I would move that we approve the additional funds and approve, approve the amount of the highest award. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Burbank and a second by Commissioner Vila Vasquez. Commissioner Vila Vasquez, would you like to speak on this or no? No. Okay. Vice Mayor Bradford? Just a that's not on the agenda. Is this going to cause a problem? It was part of the request, which is on the agenda memo. That's why I explained it on the memo. Okay. Yeah, I seen it on the memo, but I noticed it wasn't it's not a like a line item to vote on. Okay. No, I mean this is this is our future. You know, when we go to these graduations, these kids are our future. So we, we do need to invest in their education. I have no problem with that, and I guess we will figure out how to budget that this year, Mr. City Manager. An extra twenty thousand dollars. Okay, can we vote, please? Yeah. The motion passes six to one. Now move to City Commission special reports and requests. So we have Commissioner McCool. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I have a special request which I have spoken to today with the city manager. As you know or may not know, that we had a tragedy occur in Deltona this weekend where as a distracted driver um, plowed down a brother and sister with the sister succumbing to her injuries at the scene of the accident. All too often I am traveling uh, the streets of Deltona um, and see distracted driving, whether it be cell phones, whether it be people, I've seen people scrolling through their social media, whatever it is. And I've asked the city manager to enlist the help of our PIO and to citywide do a campaign regarding distracted driving because this is a tragedy that could have been avoided. This was not an accident. This was negligence uh, on the part and uh, I think that at some juncture we're all um, guilty of that, um, distracted driving, whether it's be turning around talking to children, whether it's be some food matter falling in our lap, whatever it might be. And it was a tragic accident. So I'm asking uh, the commission to, uh, for consensus for them to do a marketing campaign within the city that we may start with our on the web, that we may start with flyers, that we may start in earnest. Um, a distracted driving, um, just say no to distracted driving, whether it be throwing the phone in the back seat when you're driving, whatever the um, staff comes up with, but we really need to uh, tackle this in earnest. We are already at our capacity as far as deputies go. We can't do, we could do more enforcement, but of course that's going to be an emergency budget item to where we do that, but that we take our resources and we start working on that. So I'd like to get consensus from the city commission to work on that. This is too tragic and we really need to address this as a city as, as holistically as possible. So I'm asking for consensus. So we got Jody, Commissioner Caldwell? Yes. Commissioner Jody Lee? Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Bradford? Yes. Commissioner Vila Vasquez? Yes. Commissioner, you have consensus. 
Thank you, Mr. City Manager. If you will take that task upon and have something uh, from them presented, I would say uh, time certain by next commission meeting, at least scratch the surface of it and get started on it right away. That would be great. <laughs> Commissioner Jody Lee. Well, I guess I need a consensus too from the city commission. I want like to, I want to do a street festival in July in Deltona Boulevard. So I need a consensus. And if whoever wants to participate, I've talked with the Parks and Recs. I've talked to the city manager, and I have to get a consensus to do a street festival. And I believe it's in District Three, but it'd be right around the same road as uh, we do the, the parade. But I want to do a street festival. All these other cities do different things for the residents. I think it's time we start doing more things for our residents. So I need consensus for permission to do it. You want, are you looking for consensus to do it or yeah, to see if we have the budget to do it? To do it? No, no, it's not, I'm, I'm not, we're not, it's not going to cost us, it's not like it's going to be okay. some stupid, crazy cost. Commissioner Caldwell? Yes. Commissioner McCool? Uh, definitely, I'd like definitely like to do it, and would like to see like what, what it would cost. I mean, I did the car show, and it really didn't, call, you know what I mean. So I would like for us to have some sense of that. But absolutely, yes. Vice Mayor Bradford. Okay, let's rewind. So you're talking July. Uh, we already have a huge event that staff plans for July 4th, and. It depends on how huge we're talking, because you do have taxpayer money. We've got fire, police, and individuals that need to be there. I would love to have the actuals. I'm not opposed to it, but I would like to know what exactly is it going to cost, because this is something that we would want to do properly and have the budget for. Mm -hmm. So I think it's awesome. I love the idea of it, you know, but... We also have to look at staff time of what other events and activities do they already have planned in July, and what is going to be the cost of fire, what is going to be the cost of, you know, we got to have, we got to have police, ambulance, fire, trash. There's a lot more to it than just that. So I just like to have the cost associated with what it would be to put this on. Okay, or I could just change it and I'll do a special event and do it myself and pay for all the fire to the city workers and everybody else. I'm trying to do stuff for the people in the city. I'll pay for it myself. I'll pull a special events permit and do it myself. Do you want me to continue getting consensus or not? It, however you want to do it, because... Commissioner Vila Vasquez? Yes, I think that what um, Jody is looking is to start the plans um, of how you know this can be put together. Um, so, yes. Commissioner Burbank. Jody, where the hell did you ever get an idea to throw a party on Delta on his 60th birthday? <laughs> I do think that we should wait till August, though, because that is actually the anniversary, and it would also give us a little more time to plan. And as, as Commissioner, uh, as our, our fellow Commissioner mentioned, that is also the 4th of July. We could do another one in August. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> you got a big city, 100,000 people. You're tired of going to Sanford for entertainment. You have consensus, uh, Thank Mr. You. Chisholm. Thank you. Okay, I think. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> now I need. I, uh, this is an easy one. Another consensus item to ask me, the city manager to check in to take in that house that's on Hill Hill. I can't even think about it. It's the 646 number house, Mr. The manager, you know what I'm talking about, the house out there in the woods by the septic. If we can find out what it would cost to make an animal shelter out there. We spend so much money sending animals to the land and everywhere else and paying all this astronomical amounts of money. Let's do it in our own backyard, save some money instead of having our Animal patrol going way out in the middle of nowhere, dropping off animals. We're spending over $100,000 on uh, the TNR program. Uh, we have a building that's <laughs> nobody wants to live in because the smell that is right next to the wastewater treatment. If nobody's been out there, I suggest you go out there and visit because nobody's going to live there. It smells wonderful. And, but we've already bought the land for an over-exorbent, inflated price of $850,000 for a house that's probably place that's probably worth $100,000. And I'm sure past commissioners, a couple of them voted no on this property, I can already imagine, because it was, that's what we paid for, $850,000, but it, it smells wonderful. But if we can direct the city manager to check in, see what it costs to run an animal shelter out there and have it closer to home, then spending all this crazy money that we do to go to every other town and city in Volusia County. 
You're looking for consensus to yeah, see so how much it would cost. He can push, go to it and see what it costs us. Commissioner Burbank. Um, well, one final statement before I sign off for the evening. Uh, no, we're, we're trying to see if you're going to give them consensus or not. Consensus. To do what? Consensus oh, okay. to check an animal shelter. Where's this out on, um, out on Osteen, Jody? Yeah, yes. that one, that's a Hulk Hill that property we bought. There used to be an animal shelter in Del Tone. It was just a temporary storage facility. And the people from Del Land would come and pick the animals up. It was up off of uh, Parma Drive several years ago. It's not a bad idea. It's something worth looking into. Thank you. So was that a yes or a no? That's a yes. Okay. Commissioner Vila Vasquez. I'm committing to do research on it. I'm not committing to it, but to do research on it. Uh, Vice Mayor Bradford. I think we need to have the research done on it as well. That's not the, is that the, that's not the Lohan, Casey Lohan property, because that property was also, I thought, already being slated for a training facility for the firefighters. Was that not the area they were talking about doing the training facility already? At one yep. time it was. That's exactly where, right? So yes. that property was already slated it, for the training facility. So was the training facility killed already? It's, I, I don't know if it's been killed or not. Well, because I'm, I'm just confused here because we're just, we're up here without all the information. The part of when we come up here to vote and put something on the agenda is if it doesn't cost us any additional funds or doesn't require research. We already had voted, I thought, to make a training, put a training, firefighter training facility over there. So I'm a little confused here. Is it available property? Is it not available property? Like he's saying, what did it cost us? What does a new facility cost? I don't have any problem with doing research on it, but was it not already slated for something? Neither do I. I don't have I don't have the cost of either one of those facilities, but we will work on that. So I guess you'll get us the price for both, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Commissioner Dana McCool. Consensus to investigate that because I the the um, last I heard it was a firefighter tra a training facility also that was the intended purchase because if you remember the decibel level out there is quite crazy it's bad out there so I mean just think about that Commissioner Caldwell I'm a yes to investigate also so you have consensus to investigate okay. on, the, on the cost guess that's it until my comments but you're right it was fed to everybody as a by the previous city manager as a fire training center but that wasn't the total honesty that you guys were fed back then so i'm just letting you know well, i would love to have that brought back then because we were all under the assumption that it was a training facility which we all love the idea of and putting animals over there where it's really loud it's, that's a lot for them, so we do need to do a lot of research. Like they're saying, you've got a loud facility, dogs and very sensitive ears, you can, that's why they have silent whistles, and then we want to put them where it's extremely loud. It, well, we may I've want been, to look I, at better areas. I've been out there, and at a different time, Steve, Mr. Caldwell's been out there too, it's really not that loud. It's the smell it gets to you. But it's, oh, the, it's the, loud. the smell, the, the 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 noise isn't extremely. It's the smell it gets to you. So I understand why the whole thing took place. But like I said, it was it's still a, a property we bought for eight hundred and fifty thousand, and it's only valued at I think three hundred thousand. So I don't know why we paid eight hundred fifty thousand for it in the first I place. <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Burbank, and then jo Commissioner Jody Lee, you're back on there. Uh, Commissioner Burbank, and then we're going to end the special requests, unless somebody else okay. has a special request. Okay. You're good? I'm, I'm done. Okay. Did you have something, Commissioner Vila Vasquez? No, we're still doing the special. All right, I have one special uh, request. I had a resident of, this, of the city that brought up a grievance to me, uh, city manager Chisholm, and they want, so I'm pretty much instructing you if you can please look into these uh, grievances that she brought up, and uh, if you can please address it with her, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and move uh, over. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I apologize profusely. Um, it was at the end of my comments, but um, I would like for us to take seriously uh, and ask, request that the city manager look into um, the 
information that was brought to you regarding the uh, Chris that was up here to, to try to speak because what you saw there was a young man desperate yes. for answers about his home. He's asked and he's come before and he's asked questions and I think that he's been pushed off and I think that it, I promised him I would call him tomorrow so I want that information but I also want us as a city to call him tomorrow and address those issues because that's a frustrated young man. He is losing everything that he has. He's still living in an RV for his home. And I, there might be others out there, but when somebody comes in front of this commission desperate for help from us, this is what our job is. And if we could please look into that. I'm going to call him tomorrow. I'm going to call him after y'all have had a chance to call him. So I'm making that special request that we address this young man first thing in the morning because he came out here. He was in near tears uh, trying to protect his life investment. So if we could do that, that would be great. Right. Do you have the address, phone number? Bridget has I, all of that right there. Okay. I, I have it as well, uh, city manager, and he did, uh, he, he was through a third person explaining that the the lake where he lives is, is rising and from my understanding he has a lot of experience yep. with how to you know lower some of these lakes and he's just afraid he's going to lose his home yep. and and i felt extremely bad but it was it just it wasn't the time so if we could address it i mean if i have, if we have consensus here i think we probably do is he in the teresa basin i believe yeah. yes teresa basin yes. is that teresa basin okay. He did not put the address on the request to speak yes. form. It is three I'll, I'll find out. I just. Okay. Uh, if we could address that, Mr. City Manager, I know you don't have anything else in the world to do, but if we could do that, if we could do that before lunch, because again, the young man was desperate and he was very upset, and I would like to have that addressed, because um, I would like to follow up with him after lunch. Bridget, if I could get that email to me, that would, and maybe the commission, that would be fantastic. So, so I apologize, Mr. Mayor. True. You're welcome. City attorney comments? No. No comments? City manager comments? Yes, I do. I have a number of comments. Um, number one, on April the 13th, we've got a job fair from 1 to 5 at the center of Deltona. Uh, that is going to have city, county um, jobs will be open there. They're, they're going to be the county's a part of it. So the school board as well as uh, this city, and then there are businesses also associated with it and the hospital. So I look, uh, that's going to be some opportunities for people looking for jobs. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the Teresa Basin uh, issue, because it's an interesting one. There's only one point of, um, of outfall for that whole basin. It's one that's constructed by the city. And there was some litigation, and the Water Management District actually sought uh, the ability to cement closed that outfall. During the course of the hurricane, the city staff went and opened it up, and I instructed them to leave it open until such time as uh, the elevations got down to where the, the you know, you're draining the lakes from the north to the south. So the south is going to drain first, but then you could still be high water in the north because of the impediments in getting it there. Uh, we actually left it open longer than the Water Management District liked for us to do that. And they raised, uh, in fact, they sent me a warning letter that um, we were in violation of permit. I told them we would probably stay in violation of that permit as long as we had homes that were flooded and we were going to do what was in best interest of the city. And we did that. And I also responded to them uh, in, in reaction to the, um, the, the Water Management District's insistence upon us cementing it back. I said, that's totally unreasonable. It makes no sense to have an outfall that's constructed for the purpose of lowering the lake levels and then to put concrete in it so you can't manage it. And then they said, well, you're going to have to show us how you're going to do it. So I said, well, for, at this point, we will give you um, wooden batters that will close it uh, right now, but we're going to come up with a plan of how it has to be managed, and then we'll get back and respond to the Water Management District. Now, the, the, um, the part of the district is, is enforcement. They were not real happy with my response, but I told them, well, 
you need to have the executive director of the district to get in touch with me, because I'm trying to get in touch with him, and I can't get to him. He's not able to respond to us. So I said, if, if he doesn't get to me, then I'll be happy to appear before the board, uh, the Water Management Board, and um, carry my issue to him. Because it is absolutely ridiculous to think that you've got an outfall system that because two people sued the city and the district, it got closed off and you can't manage the system the way that it was closed off. I said, that's unacceptable. We're not going to accept that. So I'm back to meeting with them sometime. The second, which gets back to the issue, because I'd like to see, what, I'm going to talk to the gentleman, Chris. I, I couldn't get his address and all that stuff when he was up here. But I'll talk to him about this particular issue. If he's in that Teresa Basin, then there's probably some things we can do, but we're, we're going to have to. Um, work through it. But I can tell you this, we've also contacted the county, had the county manager here. We've discussed uh, finding a, a second outfall to the north, out of the north end of the system, to get relief directly from that system north without it having to go all the way south. It also would be included in a plan on how all the elevations of the lakes would be managed. And to do that, we're going to have to know what the elevations of all the properties around it would be and where the septic tanks are and what the elevation septic systems. And so it's a pretty expensive process. In addition to that, we had, as you know, that I submitted to the legislative delegation a series of estimates of costs for improving the Teresa Basin as well as other drainage problems within the city. And I can tell you, they came back to us and said, okay, we need for you to reduce it, because our, our request was about $115 million. And uh, they said, if you can reduce it, they would like for us to do that. So we went back and we gave them three options. One was $30 million for uh, a treatment process. Another, we had a couple other reductions, and with the main thought is, um, the first thing we need to get done is a study that shows how we're going to make improvements in the system, what the improvements are, get the design done, and then that's going to take probably six to nine months to get done. Once that's done, then we'll be back into doing construction for it. Now, I know it doesn't seem that the city's been doing a lot, but I can tell you we've been doing a lot trying to get to the point where we can get something done. So we're in that process with the Teresa Basin. Second issue, is, and I've heard this, and I, and, uh, I don't think anybody's any more uh, concerned about it than I am, the straw project, which is 4B, an absolutely ridiculous project to take water at the city's expense, pump it from Lake Monroe to a, a, a bed of sand that's supposed to percolate it into the system so it recharges Blue Springs. Now, in my estimation, there's a real difficulty in understanding how that recharges Blue Springs, but more importantly, nobody else is doing it. In Blue Springs, and the last time I checked, says pretty much right in the middle of, of Orange City and D-Land, and, and pretty close to the, to the St. Johns River. So I don't understand why it's so important for us to be shouldering the cost and the expense and taking city property and, cur and basically rendering not available to the public for the purposes of, of uh, pumping water from Lake Monroe to this sand pit that doesn't work. They found out it doesn't work, so then you'd have to do a, a deep well or a shallow well injection to make it work. Now, we have been to, we've been to them and said, look, this doesn't work. We're not ready to put more money into it, and it is my objective to then take the project that we have, the assets we have bought, and put them back into the utility system as improvements in the system other than this particular uh, project. So I can tell you I've got to work through that problem, and it will not be something that happens quickly. Uh, but it's something I'm trying to get the best use of the, f of the investment we've made uh, for getting a return back to the city and in one which enhances our utility system. What they proposed is not. Third thing, um, 
The water meter project is out to bid. Uh, I've just extended it for 30 days. Once that's in, we'll have the meters, the meter uh, system uh, well underway and into the system. I also put on your desk tonight a list of streets. You will find it up there. I can't, oh, here it is. You'll see this list of streets. This is our paving program for this year. If you look at it, it is pretty comprehensive, it, but it tells you where we plan to put uh, the improvements. If you have any ch uh, suggestions or if you have other streets, they're probably on our list, but this is the ones that we can have funded. And, uh, but I'd like to hear from you, yeah, but, but in no means will we slow down on what we're doing to get those streets paved. We're gonna move forward. Um, let me look at my notes here for a second. Um, we got uh, the lighting project for the parks that was, for, that was for the ball fields that was funded in previous years. Uh, the lighting, we have the bids in there on. We have ordered uh, the lights to be installed on the parks. We are beginning the budget year for 23-24 now, starting to plan for next year's projects. If you have projects, you need to tell me about it. And I think that is my list for tonight. But I want you to know that we are not just sitting idly here because I'm quiet. I've been dealing with problems that were long before I got here. And hopefully we'll start dealing with the future of what we want to do in this city. And we'll have, a, we'll have a meeting where we sit down and strategically talk, not by some consultant, but us, talk about where this city's going and what improvements we want to see, it, see made, and then chart a course and start budgeting for those improvements. But um, Mr. Mayor, that's my report for this evening. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Chisholm. That was very detailed. I, I really appreciate that. And I'm sure that our residents appreciate that as well, especially with, with this, because we get, we, I'm sure the other commissioners up here get these emails about the roads. Um, I don't want I, you to think, oh, that's me, because I got a staff that's, oh, that's I, doing this work, and they're really uh, doing a great job for us. Listen, I, I know we have incredible staff. I, I give them, if I can give them props every day, I mean, I, I try, but all right. Um, Thank you. Uh, city Commissioner comments. I'm gonna start with Commissioner Burbank. Just one, I feel very good about hiring you, Mr. Chisholm, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Avila Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of things. This Saturday, uh, New Hope Services, Human Services had their volunteer appreciation breakfast, and I was invited um, to represent the city of Deltona since um, when they have their food drive, I'm always there wearing the t-shirt for the city of Deltona. They presented the city with this um, certificate of and they also gave the city the key of their success because they're saying that the city of Deltona has, is holding the key to their success. So I will be giving this to Joyce or Sandy or somebody. Um, the other thing, on Tuesday, we had Heritage Middle School, and I know we'll all, we'll all talk about that. Um, it was a wonderful experience to have all those kids here. They got the chance to sit up here and, and make comments and stuff. On Thursday, the uh, Hispanic Chamber awarded some of our local um, met people in the medical field, doctors, nurses, and, and so forth. It was a very, very nice uh, uh, event. On Friday, I had the honor of uh, going to Discovery Elementary School. They held their vehicle day at the school, and the uh, city, the county, uh, sent 
vehicles that are used by our different departments. So we had the uh, fire department, they put in their pink and pink truck and a red truck. Animal control was there, the beach squad was there, uh, sheriff's department was there, and every single child in Discovery Elementary School was thrilled to walk in through one door of the car and walk out the door on the other side, and even just to sit up there on the fire trucks. It was such a thrill for them. Um, they're also having an event, I don't have the date yet, uh, and uh, it's gonna be a walk, a uh, safety walk at Discovery Elementary School. It's my understanding a child in that school got hit by a car last year, and they lack helmets. These um, more than half of their kids ride bikes to school, and some of them can't afford helmets. So right now I'm holding a lot of departments, I'm uh, reaching out to them, none of them have said no to me. So we'll see how many uh, helmets we'll be able to, um, to uh, get for Discovery Elementary School. The egg hunt on Sunday was awesome, and you saw the chorus that was singing here from University High School. Mr. Chisholm and I, we just spoke this afternoon about bringing back music in the courtyard. And I spoke to the music teacher, and he's gonna be one of those first entertainment, he agreed to be bringing music to the courtyard, which is right here outside. It's free to the community. Um, and we'll have little buckets out there so people can drop off donations for their trip to London. I'm even gonna to volunteer to carry some of their luggage. Um, the Sunrise Elementary School, I know a teacher spoke here today, and I will be attending an event on the 28th. It's the first year of celebration of their dual language class in that school. Um, so it's this um, April 28th, and going back to Discovery, they're also gonna become a, become a dual language school, which they're gonna announce the date. April 13 is Comstat. It's gonna be here in this room at eight o'clock, so we welcome everyone to come out and meet some of our deputies, our sheriff's department staff, and listen to the updates they have regarding the city of Deltona. And I just wanna thank everyone for coming out here tonight. Commissioner Caldwell. No Commissioner Jody Lee. We can skip you, Commissioner. Go ahead, I was joking. Skip me, nah. I just wanna thank all the city staff. Y'all been doing great. It's been awesome. This manager's report, all these streets that are getting done, it's great. I'm just happy the way things are starting to move ahead. There's more projects going forward, things are getting done. I mean, there's still a few things that haven't been addressed and people have asked many times and, but. Overall, the majority of things are getting done in the process and they're speeding up and I'm, I'm just happy. Joe, I ain't gonna talk about him over there at the corner over there, he just, but I mean, all of them, every, everybody that works for the city has been doing a great job. The clerk's office, everybody, parks and recs, it's just, everything's been flowing together pretty smooth lately and I just appreciate it and I just hope it just keeps on going the way it's going. Commissioner McCool. Thank you. Um, uh, I wanted to speak to um, Commissioner Vila Vasquez. TPO will also give out helmets, so I'll inquire about that tomorrow as well. So thank you for bringing that up, and I'll uh, get with you on that also. Um, something that we continue to talk about that I want our residents to be involved in is if you have children or if you have grandchildren or whatever, call your school district and demand that we update our system and figuring out concurrency for these developments. You hear me talk about it quite often, and it's something that's bothered me for uh, the last two years, and I've been working on it. I've spoken with um, school board member uh, Ruben Colon regarding this. I have inquired with state representatives about this and is assured that it was going to be looked into. But it, it, I, I have a grandchild in the Volusia education system. My son teaches in the Volusia education system. I have friends that are teachers, uh, APs, and so forth and so on, and I'm very vested in, in education. Education. I think it's one of the most important cornerstones uh, for our children. And if we don't up here speak and, and for our children and demand that they have better 
uh, who else then, right? You are, I'm just an extension of you, and you have told me that you're concerned about your children's quality of education, and that is why I continue to demand uh, that we demand from our, it's your school district, it's not your school board, you can go in front of the school board and speak, you can write them, it's easy, click an email, but you must demand from your state representatives, from your county, from Volusia County, that they do better at determining capacity when it comes to education for our children is, is of the utmost importance. I also spoke to today the um, city manager about this, and as, as most of you know, I am uh, going through cancer right now, and um, I'm now going to have to move up to a stronger protocol uh, in my treatment that I'm not looking forward to, but I'm pretty sure that um, we'll all get through quickly. Uh, part of that is I'm going to lose my hair, and I'm just going to go ahead and shave my head, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell raffle tickets for somebody to shave my head, and the money that is generated for those raffle tickets will go to Florida Cancer Specialists. They have a fund for underfunded women uh, and men for wigs or for treatment, and I would like to raise money for that because if I'm going to go bald, I at least want to do good going bald. I don't want just my bald head poking up. So we're going to be doing raffle tickets, and we're going to sell them for somebody to uh, actually shave my head. I'm going to get the sheriff's department and the fire department involved. I believe that we all, cancer has touched everybody. This is not just about me, but it's touched somebody in your life, I am sure. Uh, and so I would like to use my platform for the good for that way. So let's get together with that. Thank you, city staff. Thank you, Joe. It was a great report uh, that you did. Thank you for continuing to work on, Glenn, our water issues. Uh, it's really appreciated. Mr. City Manager, I adore you, and I adore the job that you're doing here. Um, I, I want to, we have an issue that needs to be put to bed, and I think you know what issue I'm talking about. With Mr. Peters and Ms. Kiflo's contracts, I would like some update on that tomorrow tomorrow where we're at with that and what we're doing because it keeps being brought up to me and we can't move forward if we keep getting drugged backwards. So we need to put that to bed. Uh, and I would like to thank our residents for coming out because you guys are amazing. I keep seeing our number grow in the audience and that's a really good feeling that you're coming back and you're demanding um, from your commissioners what we were brought here to do, elected to do. So thank you all for continuing to uh, show up. I really, oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm already getting money thrown at me up here. I like it. And thank you, Mr. Chisholm, for your donation today. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for the job that you're doing. I see you out all of the time. You've been a tireless ambassador. You know I didn't vote for you, but I'm loving the job that you're doing, and I'm really proud to call you my mayor. So thank you very much. Um, appreciate it. And that's all I have tonight, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Bradford. Just a couple things. Um, can we have staff mention prior to when they're announcing public comments that a wonderful verbiage to the individuals that it's not that we don't want to communicate however you want to word it, that basically we have staff here taking notes and that they will be getting back or that we can address it afterwards and that there is no dialogue between it because so many people come up here, maybe they've never been here before and we're just sitting here like zombies looking at them and they're like, so I get no response. And it's frustrating to them and it makes us look stupid. So if we can just maybe have them make a quick announcement when they're announcing the comments that, you know, there is no dialogue back and forth so that they kind of understand and not think that we're just being disrespectful. Um, I received an email that there's additional grant money available for hurricane victims. Is that information available on the website? Do we know? I don't know? Okay. Can we see if it is and get that information out? Yep. You know, I did speak to an individual today that said he inquired on that information, but frustrating. It could take a couple years to get it, but at least you're going to get it. Or maybe I'm hoping he's wrong and it's not a two, three year process to get the funds back. Because I was hoping when we got that email that we're talking this grant money was available now, not three years from now. Um, I want to respond to a comment that's been brought up twice. Let me just get it out of here. Why did I vote for Marsha? Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. One firm, absolutely no experience for the person that was going to be here as far as municipal government. 
firm too. When I researched the individual that they were positioning here, that person was terminated for his demeanor from that other city. Something else I didn't want to deal with. I preferred to have Marsha based on her experience, her time here, and what she knows about the city. That is what I based my opinion on. Um, thank you, staff. I'm happy to see we've got a time to do spring cleaning, folks. We have Spruce Up Deltona 2023. The Spruce Up Deltona, I'm just going to read what it says because I can't lip it out. Um, for it's the city of Deltona and Waste Pole will provide large dumpsters to help collect yard waste, construction and demolition waste, and class C waste, furniture, mattresses, bulky items. It is for Deltona residents only, nor commercial use. It's going to be taking place April 15th and 16th, 8 to 5, at 2931 Day Road behind the U.S. Post Office. I encourage people to take advantage of this. There's so many times we see things that we put out, they don't get picked up, and it sits there, it's thrown at the side of your house. Take advantage of this opportunity and um, use the dumpsters, April 15th and 16th. They said, do not bring tires, household trash, motor oil, auto parts, paint, hazardous materials, pool chemicals, or large appliances. These items are accepted at the West Volusia Transfer Station, 3151 East New York Avenue, or Tomoka Landfill, 1990 Tomoka Farms. Road fees, are, uh, road, um, fees may apply. So take advantage of this spring cleaning. I believe we're going to have another one later through the year, but this is a great opportunity to, uh, to get some cleanup going. Um, Easter this weekend was great. I actually got there about 15 minutes late, and it was crazy. Awesome. Awesome. The eggs were gone. Like, literally, I think that had to be a record time of how many ever eggs we went through. Thousands. And they were gone. <laughs> hmm? Jody took them. Man, I knew it because there was none. Um, the kids were loving the face painting. I mean, it was great. Um, the only thing I would say, and I'll tell you why I was late, two gates were closed. There was only one way in, and um, there was a lot of cars that were actually coming in that was following me, and I was following them because they went to one entrance and then went to the next entrance, and there was only the one on the one entrance on Saxon open. And it would be a little bit more convenient if we maybe could get when we have a large event like that, because that's one of our largest events of the year, is to have that extra parking open. That was, that's my only thing. Other than that, the staff, y'all, rocked it again out of the park. The kids were so happy. Um, the Easter Bunny line off the, off the chart. Man, he was, I think, the most popular person there. Um, obviously, aside from the commissioners that were there. But you guys did a great job. And I believe that's all we were covered this time. Thank you. May, may I answer a question? Sure. Thank you. So, uh, Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor, the community grants. So, the West Volusia Community Housing Fair and Financial Wellness Clinic is going to be here, right here in this room, April 15, and our staff is going to be part of that. They're going to have a table here where they'll be able to answer questions. Um, about grants and affordable housing and so forth. So they're going to be here April 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's oh, yeah. Well, no, that's not it. This is additional grant money that they is might be able to answer that for them, right? Because but yeah, it's going to be here. Okay, yeah, because they went and they're looking for additional grant money, as you know, for the erosion that we have. Um, and they kind of were given a two to three year time frame. Thank you. So um, I just, a couple announcements. So for the Mayor's Fitness Challenge, we're having a 5K fun run. It's a free event for everyone to sign up. You can walk it. Um, you don't have to run it. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna run it, right? But um, you're welcome to join. It's fun, we have so much fun. I promise you guys that nobody talks politics, believe it or not. We literally just work out, we, we enjoy the time, and uh, it's a fun time. That's April 22nd. 
Uh, speaking about 5Ks, the Rotary Club is doing the Pat and Ed Northy 5K, 10K River Run. I have signed up for it, and I am going to go ahead and challenge my fellow commissioners up here to sign up as well, and uh, specifically Commissioner Jody Lee. And uh, Commissioner Codwell, Commissioner McCool, Vice Mayor Bradford, uh, Commissioner Avila Vasquez, and Commissioner Burbank. It, it's a fun time. It's, uh, it's for the, 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 the Barry D Daltona Orange City Rotary Club. It's, uh, it's a good time to be out there in the community. That's April 15th. Um, I want to give a special shout out to obviously our staff. The the Agus Travaganza was amazing. Um, I had so many residents that came up and they were like they, they were really happy and you know our staff really they, we we don't give them enough credit. And uh, Joe, if it was up to me, man, interim title would have been gone a long time ago. But that's up to our our our, our city manager. No pressure. But he's doing an amazing job, obviously. He, I'm extremely impressed, not, not to take digs at anybody else, but I think he, he is a, a very, very big fresh of, fresh, air, of breath, of fresh air that we needed and just continue that path. Don't let us down. Keep, and keep demanding more from the developers, okay? So that's pretty much all I have to say. The meeting's adjourned. Everybody have a good night.